Anderson and Leon Beal are here at the library ahead of their show at Arlington's Regent Theater called Boston's Best Divas of Soul. And later in the show, our favorite satirist, Andy Borowitz, is back with a newly launched Borowitz Report. All that ahead, Boston Public Radio, 89.7 GPH. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Corva Coleman. Former President Donald Trump's social media company, Truth Social, is poised to merge with a public shell company called Digital World Acquisition Corp. Shareholders have just approved the deal. It's possible Trump's stake in the new company could be worth over $3 billion, but he won't be able to tap that cash immediately since he wouldn't be allowed to sell shares right away. Meanwhile, Trump faces a nearly half-billion-dollar judgment in New York that is due Monday. Russia and China have vetoed a U.N. Security Council resolution on Gaza. It would have called for a ceasefire as part of a hostage deal. The U.S. says Russia and China are petty, blocking the resolution because it was drafted by Washington. NPR's Michelle Kellerman has more. U.S. Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield says she put forward the resolution in good faith, hoping it would back up the diplomacy that the U.S., Egypt, and Qatar are doing to get a ceasefire deal that would include the release of hostages held by Hamas. But she says Russia and China can't bring themselves to even condemn Hamas for the October 7th attack on Israel. Russia and China refuses to condemn Hamas for burning people alive for gunning down innocent civilians at a concert, for raping women and girls, for taking hundreds of people hostage. And she says they didn't want to see a U.S.-drafted resolution succeed. Russia and China say any resolution should demand an immediate ceasefire. Michelle Kellerman, NPR News, the State Department. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has returned to Israel today. Despite the setback at the U.N., Blinken is continuing talks toward reaching a ceasefire and trying to free hostages. He's also reiterating U.S. opposition to an Israeli plan to mount a military push into southern Gaza. The U.S. says more than a million Palestinian civilians have nowhere to shelter. Officials in Ukraine say at least five people were killed and 14 wounded following Russia's massive attack on Ukraine last night. Russian rockets hit the Dnipro hydroelectric station in Zaporizhia. The dam is on fire, but according to Ukrainian authorities, there is no immediate threat of a breakthrough. NPR's Polina Litvinova has more. Russia launched one of the most massive attacks on Ukraine in recent times. President Volodymyr Zelensky wrote on his telegram that Russia launched 60 drones and about 90 missiles of different types. The Ukrainian Air Force managed to shoot down most of the drones, but only just over a third of the missiles. The rest of them hit different targets in several Ukrainian cities. One of those is the Dnipro Dam in Zaporizhia. It was damaged with two direct strikes. Last summer, the Kahovka Dam was destroyed. The flooding after that ruined several towns in the Kherson region and caused an ecological disaster. Polina Litvinova, NPR News, Kyiv. On Wall Street, the Dow was down 190 points. This is NPR. Good morning. With the latest from the GBH Newsroom, I'm Henry Santoro. Nearly 108,000 Americans died of drug overdoses in 2022. That number was finalized and released by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention yesterday. The CDC also says that over the last two decades, the number of U.S. overdose deaths has risen almost every year and continues to break annual records. It makes it the worst overdose epidemic in American history. This 2022 number is roughly 1% higher than the 2021 number. And one of the country's biggest gatherings of gamers is now underway in Boston. PAX East kicked off yesterday at the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center. This is the 20th anniversary of the PAX event that takes place in multiple cities throughout the world. The four-day Boston conference features panels, it features tournaments, game demos, and plenty of cosplay. Kelly Pandolfo came to the event dressed as a Viking. It's cool that you have like four days a year where you get to spend time with people who have the same interest and then you just go back to your big girl and big boy jobs and it's different. (laughs) Furries everywhere. PAX East runs through Sunday. 
In sports, the Celtics are in Detroit for a game against the Pistons tonight. Exhibition baseball, Red Sox play the Blue Jays, and college hoops. March Madness continues with a bunch of men's and women's teams playing today. Say what you will about March Madness, but they really know how to keep hoop alive. This is GBH News. Support for NPR comes from NPR stations. Other contributors include Procter & Gamble, maker of z Pure Z's Gummies, designed with melatonin for occasional sleeplessness to help people fall asleep naturally. Learn more at z This is NPR. Brady, I am Marjorie Egan. You're listening to Boston Public Radio 89.7 GBH. We are broadcasting live from the Boston Public Library and streaming at youtube.com slash GBH News. Later in the show, Live Music Friday today, we're going to hear from the divas of Boston Soul, Athene Wilson and Darlene Wynn. We're so Very excited about that. And later on, satirist Andy Borowitz who's going to regale us with his very clever political satire. Tuesday, right here at the Boston Public Library, Maura Healy, the governor, is going to be with us to take our questions and yours from 11 to noon. Hello, Jim. Let me just say again, Darlene and Athene were rehearsing. Thank you. They can really... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, they're, they're, they're great. So if you're not here now, I'd get here by 11.30 for that. Kicking off the show, we're going to fuse one of our beloved at BPR moldy chestnuts with another chestnut that hasn't quite turned moldy yet. Yesterday, in a PR statement that acquired approximately none of the discourse around Kate Middleton's bizarre disappearance, representatives from the palace say the Princess of Wales is perfectly fine. The reason we haven't seen her is because in addition to recovering from abdominal surgery, she's been working from home on a special project, which sounds actually great around kids and that sort of stuff. That's right. Kate Middleton, unexpected champion for workers' rights and giving people the freedom to do their job from the comfort of a warm bed, Although, who knew the Royals actually worked? She might consider teaming up with Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, who, I'm sure you know this, has a bill in the Senate that he introduced a week or so ago that would shorten qualifications for worker overtime from 40 to 32 hours in a push for a long, long overdue four-day work week. So we're doing one of our quarterly work check-ins at 877 301-8970 301-8970 for call or text. We're using this royal work-from-home announcement as a way into a conversation about work-from-home culture as employers continue trying, at least in some cases, to get their workers enthusiastic about a return to the 9-to-5 cubicle life. Are you still proudly work-from-home, happy with some kind of hybrid? And where do you fall on the question of a 4 day work week, and we will not, despite Marjorie's efforts, be talking about the marchioness of (laughs) Chambray. We are not. 877, (laughs) whatever her name is, 877-301-8970. That was one of the the conspiracy theories that was swirling around. I know, and we're not talking about that. that One of the reasons she was in hiding was because she was upset protesting her husband's alleged, and there's no evidence of this whatsoever, at least as far as I know. That's why we're talking about it, because there's absolutely no evidence on the website. Whatever it is, like okay, that. fine. He was carrying on with her, but apparently they're trying to uh, play down all. These oh my God! Kids. Enough with the princess already. Well, I just Let's point get- out that she has been dipping her toes. She has, as the New York Post put, yeah. put into work at the start of February. She is ensconced in Adelaide College, Cottage, at Windsor, uh, at Windsor, working from home, dipping her toes into the various charities, and there are 30 of them. With okay, she's fine. Involved. Now, let me tell you two things. If mm-hmm. you've been listening to our show through COVID, both of us are pro-hybrid work. Mm-hmm. We both think human contact is actually a nice thing from time to time, particularly for young workers, helps them get mentored, that sort of thing. But a hybrid, you do a hybrid thing here. Uh, you're only I'm, home one day. One but day a still, week. I work from home. Right. And I love it. So that's one. We are pro-hybrid. We want to mm-hmm. know how the work from home thing is going for you. And as you know, I have been championing under much ridicule from Marjorie, the four-day work week forever. It's been 83 years since FDR signed the 40-hour work week into existence with virtually no modern, well, modern technology for then, not now. With the current technology we have, it's clear we can do it. And as we discussed with you a few months ago, there was just a, a, a pilot program in the UK with dozens, I think hundreds actually, of firms uh, tried out with 3,000 workers total the four-day work week. And not only was it a wild success in terms of productivity, you get the same pay as when you work 40 hours, by the way, 91% of the companies 
that had been part of the pilot program, 91% decided to continue the four-day work week after the pilot was over. A lot of Western Europe is already, Norway and Denmark, the two happiest countries in the world, have 37 hour, not 32, but 37 hour work weeks. And as we said the other day, they're the happiest two countries in the world. The number is 877-301-897. You're changing all the time on four-day work week. Where are yeah, you? Yeah, I'm okay in the four-day work week. Okay is not much of an endorsement. Well, here's what I'm really for. And, and what are you really Business for? Insider's got a good story about this, that people are clamoring from, for work-from-home jobs. A flex job survey suggests Americans still prefer work-from-anywhere roles, particularly millennials. Um, a lot of them are willing to give up money, big time, or even where they live. They, they survey, in this survey from Business Insider, it says people, uh, will 41% would move to a different state if given the opportunity mm -hmm. for remote work. 40% would locate to a different city. And one in four, more than one in four, would move to a different country, mm -hmm. Jim, if they got to do uh, remote work. Wouldn't mind that at all because of the cost of lower living and climate and culture. So I think the pandemic, the, the best thing about the pandemic, perhaps, has been the fact that that companies have realized that people can get a lot done from home. And I think that's why- Except for Elon Musk, who hasn't figured yeah, it out yet. Well, he's, I mean, there are, you know, as we always point out, there are certain jobs you can't do from home. You can't teach school from home. That was a disaster. You can't do other jobs well, from home. Well, I would home. actually believe you could do most of what they do at Twitter from home, but Elon Musk yeah. is just a hard-ass kind if of guy. If you're basically in front of a computer all day, you can work from home and you can work from anywhere. And that's one of the things that people are clamoring for. And apparently, uh, when these off jobs are offered for remote work, like never in or maybe once a month in, mm -hmm. uh, they can't, uh, they, they fill them almost immediately. The number is 877-301-8970. Couple things on the table, sort of a, as I say, a quarterly update on the show of where you are in work from home. Are you pro hybrid? Are you going in every, I do go in every day and it's not because I'm trying to bend the curve. I just like it. And uh, Marjorie is a semi-hybrid kind of person. And where are you on the long, long overdue 32-hour work week? And by the way, almost every study that's been done on it in the last decade shows that workers are more productive in total working four days a week than they are in five because they so look forward to the freedom of that extra day to do all the things that none of us have any time to do. You know, I know you don't want to talk about Kate Middleton, Jim. But I do not, no. First several emails are sure. about her. Marilyn from Cape Cod says... <laughs> I spotted Kate Middleton <laughs> and Richard Simmons working remotely yeah, from a local too. Starbucks. When you are a gone. queen, okay, it's a seven-day work week. He's no longer with us, Richard uh, Well, Simmons? no, I, he, he's either disappeared the or curly not hair disappeared. And he was always bouncing yeah, he's around the doing aerobics. Exercise guy, yeah, the exercise yeah. guy, Richard Simmons. Do you mind if we talk about what we're actually nope, intending it's, to talk okay, about? Okay, let's go to Suzanne Thank from you. Plymouth. Thank you for calling. Hi, Susanna. Susanna, too, by yep, the way. Yep, Susanna. Susanna, how are you? Hi. Hi. Good, how are you? We're excellent, thank you. I listen all the time. You do, that's very nice of you, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, I work four days a week. Oh. Um, home care nurse. Oh. And, and I see a lot of people working from home and they love it. And I also love a four day work week because I can get everything done on my Mondays off. Yeah, that's the thing. It, it, on Mondays, most everybody else is at work, so you can get a lot of errands done that are easier to do on a Monday than they are on Saturday, right? No that's not, by the way, it's not only getting things done, yeah. which is huge, Susanna, but isn't the expectation on the Friday that you know you don't have to go back to work Tuesday, doesn't that cause great happiness and uplift in your spirits at the end of the prior week? It does so much. I always love having three days off because I know that I can relax and get... Like I said, on Monday, I get so much done. Now, Susanna, one last question for you, since you have a little extra free time. Are you sick of Marjorie talking about the Marchioness of Chambray <laughs> or not? <laughs> well, obviously not. She's laughing. Okay, yeah. Susanna, thank you for the call. We appreciate it. Well, apparently it. Prince William is sick of it, too. He's... <laughs> No, he's really angry. He's I read very that. He's angry very angry. and frustrated, disappointment, uh, disappointed uh, at the spread of rumors surrounding Princess Kate, particularly since one of the main rumors revolves around him. So he's By the way, very I, upset. You know, I mocked. The uh, I'm play. not a big royals person, mm -hmm. and we were talking about the great things that Diana yep. did. The woman that we met, whose daughter is a fabulous with a royal ballet, I think, in London. Uh, we met her at Lynching Tree at the. Uh, 
at the uh, Gardner a couple of months yep. ago. She emailed us yesterday and said that she did? actually, yeah, that that what's called that uh, Kate does a lot of good things in the spirit of her for, of her well mother-in-law of Diana. That she's very community oriented. She really cares about kids. Does a lot of programs with kids. So I apologize for trashing her on that regard the other day. No, she does this whole thing about uh, children keeping up with their milestones as they mm -hmm. grow with little babies, newborn mm -hmm. babies, toddlers, little kids, and uh, it's a program that she's very involved well, with. Well, you know, she also spends a lot of time on which I think is really good. into what? The other thing, which she really deserves praise for, she apparently spends almost half her time looking for imposters <laughs> who look enough like her that can go out to uh, markets. And Teddy in Providence, you're next on Boston Public Radio. We're talking about the changing workplace. Hey there, Teddy. Hey, guys. Great to be on the show. Thank you. All right. So I, I'm a small business owner. Uh, yeah. I've got a cafe. We're mm -hmm. open seven days a week. And that means two things. One, I love my interactions with people. I agree with you, Jim. I love getting to see people every day. So it gets me up in the morning. But also, sometimes I'm envious to see people coming in, sitting down, enjoying the cafe who get to work remotely. Mm -hmm. So I see both sides of it. Um, but one thing that it was a concern of mine was if we went to a uh, four-day work week, same pay, 32 hours instead of 40, um, what that would do to the cost of labor in the small business and, and then trickling down with the cost. And what would it do in your case, Teddy? Well, you know, the folks that I, I pay full time, I think I'd be uh, more um, apt to pay part time employees less days a week. Um, mm -hmm. But still, I think the, the wages would have to go up, mm -hmm. which would mean that the cup of coffee would cost more, which is fine, probably, um, to everyone who would enjoy the the four-day work week, but well, it's, I it's think, a trade-off. But, but it is a trade-off, but I say as someone who would love a four-day work week, I guess what goes with it is what you're suggesting, is that if you want other people to benefit from the same thing that you want, Jim or Marjorie or Teddy, then you may have to pay a little bit more for certain things, and that's we'll see where the rubber meets the word. Hey, the Road, Teddy, uh, we have a lot of listeners in Providence. Why don't you say the name of your cafe if you'd like? Sure, guys, it's We Roast Coffee. And I love and totally support, uh, and especially with membership going on right now, support uh, GBH Great. and our local MPR. So you're terrific. Um, think of it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. We appreciate you too. Thank you very much for the call. We appreciate well, it very you. much. Speaking of which, oh, Marjorie is so it is time excited. To take a, it's time to take a break. I've got my uh, little little gift for today right in my hand. You're listening to Boston Public Radio 89.7. We're broadcasting live from the Boston Public Library, streaming at youtubecom News. We're talking about two things really: the four-day work week, remote work, working from home. I guess it's three things because we're adding on Kate Middleton, Marjorie who is. is now dipping her toes back into the work she place, is dipping them. and uh, she has not been kidnapped or done. As far as done, we know, as far as we know, she's just. Recovering back at home. Boston Public Radio. Live local conversations every day brought to you by listener support. Now it's your turn to keep the conversation going with an ongoing contribution in any amount. Please sign up as a sustaining member during our spring membership drive. Call 888-897-9424 or give online at gbhnews.org. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> I hope you can hear this. What is it, Marjorie? <laughs> this is my favorite gift that we offer to people what for is coming it? to Spain. I'm, I'm cranking as fast as I can. It's the Eton Crank Radio. This is what we give today, 10 bucks a month on a sustainer mm -hmm. plan. This is a really cool thing. Okay. The Eton Crank Radio. I think we've had enough cranking. Go ahead. AM, FM. Yeah. This is for if there's a crisis, right? Okay, it's kind yes. of an emergency thing. Yeah. AM, FM, uh, National Weather Service Channel. Power sources, multiple power sources. The hand crank. Here's the hand crank. I'm yeah. cranking. Mm -hmm. Solar power. I can't crank anymore because I'm tired. But you can this, charge this your is phone how you rev. Too, by this the way. is how you rev up the battery. I got right? it. You can hand yeah, crank. I got it. Okay, it's got fine. solar power. It has an LED flashlight built in. You can give, as you just said, your cell phone a charge for ten bucks a month, which is what we call sustainer membership. That means our uh, budgeters can plan the budget for the entire year. Ten bucks a month or 120 dollars all at once. The deadlines to get the Eton radios when our show ends at two today. You know why they did that? No. Jim, because they know what a fan I am of the Eton, mm -hmm. a crank radio. Emergency uh, crank radio. Emergency to crank you. radio restaurant. Ready to crank it in a moment's notice so you can hear mm -hmm. the sound. Anyway, that's the deal for today. This is the third day of our fun drive, and if we didn't have these occasional fun drives, as I say all the time, we'd have commercials and they would be really bad. 888 897 9424, gbhnews.org. Did someone call this like the 
Swiss Army knife of radios. Yes, it does everything. It really is great. And by the it's way, Marjorie, a great word for it. If you, th it wasn't mine, but someone said it on our a team here. Uh, if people think Marjorie is making up her love of this, oh, a couple of years right ago, here. I stole one of these from a closet, yep. and I decided to give it to her for Christmas it's or her one. birthday. And what did she tell me? I already have three. <laughs> Do your kids give them to you or something? I don't know. I've accumulated over the, over the years. They're fabulous. They're great. They They're really great. are fabulous. Yeah, are and great. again, for emergencies, you carry them in your car or when you go somewhere. Uh, you don't need a battery, obviously. It's also got a light. Did you mention there's an LED, LED flashlight light. thing yep. in there? Yep, yep. But most important to me, you can charge your cell phone. And aren't you always worried when you're going somewhere your cell phone's going to die? Exactly. And it's $10 a month or $120 all at once. You call 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. And I'll remind you, as we do every day, a pledge for those of you who believe, as I used to think, that uh, the vast majority of our money comes from the federal government, I was wrong, and you are wrong if you believe that. It's under 5%. 70% plus comes from listener support. That would be you. And if you like what you hear from us and our colleagues, for example, today, is the show live, the culture show from the library, mm -hmm. Aiden, today? Yes, it, it is. is. Yes, it is. Stick around. That's going to be live right here. Two fab. well, I shouldn't say our show's fabulous. We have our show, and there's a fabulous show right after us. Uh, and that's part of what you get for your uh, contribution. Emil from Marlboro says he What's thinks he, he already has a crank radio, Jim. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's just that I listen to Jim. <laughs> uh -huh. That's a good one. Thank eight, you. 888-897-9424-gbhnews.org. Eight, 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 oh Emil from Mar uh, Marlboro, that was a great email. Welcome back to Boston Public Radio. Jim Browdy and Marjorie Egan. The uh, governor will join us here on Tuesday at the library. We're at the library today. Streaming at youtube.com slash The governor is with us for an hour on Tuesday, 11 to 12. Hope you join us then, too. Uh, I guess propelled by the fact that uh, Princess Kate is allegedly working from home, yep. we're doing our check-in on work from home. How's it going for you? What's your perspective on it these days? Employers, it's good to hear from you like that cafe owner. And... Bernie Sanders' long overdue effort to uh, get Congress to pass a four day work week. Let's go to JD. Is that how you say it in Swansea? It's Judy. Judy, uh, I'm hi. sorry. That, was, I wanted to, that is embarrassing. Okay. I'm sorry, I Judy. Would, go I, would, ahead. I, would, I would probably answer to JD. <laughs> well, <laughs> close enough. What's I, up, Judy? First of all, I. I, first of all, I want to tell you I love your show. I listen every chance oh, I get. Oh, thank very you nice. very thank much. You. And, I am a remote worker, and I haven't stepped foot inside an office since 2005. Really? And I won't even consider, yeah. I started, that started, I work in IT, and back when I worked for ING, they said, nobody in your group is in the same office you're in. You don't have to go into work. You can just work from home. And so I did. And uh, since then, I have not taken a single position that did not allow me to work from home. Hey, I wouldn't Judy, even consider Judy. a job that was even hybrid. Judy, uh, oh, that's my first question. Then my second question is, don't you miss contact with your coworkers? I mean, actual like sitting. What, no. In, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's no, an honest. I don't miss it. I have friends. <laughs> you mean apart from your work deal? I don't need work friends. Well, well, you know, part of the reason why I really switched over to full time remote was yeah. because I realized how much more work I got done when yeah. I stayed home. Yeah. You do. I, I, I find that too. too. You're not running around, you know, kibitzing all in the kibitzing in the, kibitzing in the office all day long. Or yeah, you don't have a yeah. steady of stream of people stopping at your cube to say exactly. how was your weekend? What you do? Yeah. Judy, I'm not that as a, yeah. uh, productive at home. Maybe you can help me. I generally set up a chair right in front of the refrigerator, and that's how I spend my day. <laughs> do you have any advice? <laughs> I have a separate office. I only go in the office when I'm working. I only come out if it's mealtime. I mean, I'm pretty structured. But I do think that that's an individual thing. Not everybody wants to do that. Some people want the social aspect. I don't care. And I will gladly, like, give a couple hours off the books just to avoid the commute. Hey, uh, Judy, that was a great call. You obviously have pretty strong feelings, and we're glad you expressed them. Thanks so much. James in Marblehead is representing the people that get mad at us every time we have this conversation because, right. as James says, believe it or not, ditch diggers and roofers, James is a carpenter, mm -hmm. can't, and he can't do it either, can't work from home, and they're part of the audience, too. It feels like we don't exist when I listen to these conversations. So he, he, you got a point, James. You no, can't. he doesn't have a point. He, he said, with all due respect, he calls it liberal elite. There are a lot of low-wage workers who do jobs that do allow them to work from home. 
from home. Obviously, some people can't. But I, James, having said that, as a tradesman, or a trades, well, in your case, a tradesman, uh, uh, you could do the four-day work week, which is an alternative that could apply to people who aren't fortunate enough to be able to work from home. So I, all your points are fine. The liberal elite thing, I, I, I just doesn't do it for me. But thank you much for your perspective. As an employer, 35 people we've elected 100% remote, and that has made it possible to hire the best people no matter where they live. The problems for us with four-day work weeks are people have great, our people have great pay and benefits, but it would really hurt the company profits, this person says. The bigger problem is our customers work 40 hours a week, and they want our people to be available to them 40 hours a week. But there'd be a whole a cultural change. By the way, a 40-hour work week doesn't mean the business shuts down like on a Friday. It means let, I'm making this a half of your workforce does Tuesday to Friday, the other half does Monday to Thursday. So you can get coverage. And it's a ten hour day. So everybody ends up working. Well, not hours what Bernie week. Bernie Sanders is talking about a thirty two hour where he's not talking yeah. about a ten hour day. I think that's, that's called a be hard. That's called a compressed work week, yeah. which you're talking about. But a uh, Bernie Sanders is talking about they're, well they're doing it in Norway and and Denmark and Belgium, I think they have a thirty two uh, hour work week. And by the way, this, this thing, this experiment I talked about in the UK, that 91% of employers are continuing, that was a 32-hour work week too. And they're more productive than when they were working 40 hours. Judy in Denver says, Sarah Rose Hanbury is the marchioness de, it's not Chamadeli, whatever you said. Whatever Jim, it is, yeah. Is, that's right. Say it again, please. The Marchioness of Chomley. Well, That's whatever. Right. That was the me. I, I made that tape. Of Chomley. Yeah. Judy of Danvers, we stand corrected. You are absolutely right. It's mm. the Marchioness of Chomley. And, uh, are that's we trying to get her on, Jamie? Are we trying to get the Marchioness of Chamberlain <laughs> on the show? Chumley. We are. The Why are we trying? Why is he making a face at of me? of Canterbury, you know. He runs the church over he's there. He's the head church guy. Yes, he's very What's upset. He saying? What's he upset the about? the online trolls spreading these awful conspiracy theories about Kate Middleton. He's been quoted as saying, says the archbishop is extremely unhealthy. It's just old-fashioned village gossip that can now go round the world in seconds. And we have to turn away from that gossiping. Is wrong. Can I tell you one thing? You know, Aiden just had a great idea. We have asked the governor on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I think in early April, we have asked the attorney general. We obviously monthly have asked the mayor. How about ask the marchioness? <laughs> I mean, would that be, who else is doing that? <laughs> I don't think anybody. How huge would that be? That would be huge. How many questions do you have if for we her could already? Get the marchioness of Chamelay out Chamelay, here. right. I mean, I think that would be the, okay, the pinnacle of our career, Jim. Susan in Boston, it would, anything would be. Susan in Boston, you're next. Quickly, hi. Hi there. Um, I just wanted to say that the four, I work a four-day work week. And? And what it gives me is the opportunity. I take care of my grandson. So That's I great. save money for my, for my son and in child care. And I get that time to bond with my grandson. Fabulous. We have one day a week where it's just Fabulous. the two of us. So it helps in a trickle-down kind of way where it's one less day to pay for daycare. Well, not only the daycare part is hugely important and when people are living in tough economic straits, but much more important to me, Susan, is what you talked about bonding with your grandkid. That's something you can't do if you're working like a dog five days a week. That was a great one. Susan, thank you very much for your call. We're out of time. Okay. We have another pledge here, and I'm very excited because people are uh, actually texting in about the Eton Crank Radio, which no, we're going to talk me. about Eton in a second. Emergency Crank Radio. Emergency Crank Radio. Crank radio. Emergency Crank Radio. Okay, stay tuned because we got something really great coming up in just a couple of seconds. We got our live music Friday segment. And this week, we're going to hear Boston's best divas of soul, Athene Wilson and Darlene Wynn. They're going to sing for us right here at the Boston Public Library. And of course, you're going to hear them on the radio. It is fantastic you're listening to Boston Public Radio. 89.7 GBH Broadcasting Live from the Boston Public Library and streaming at youtube.com slash GBH News. It's time to support Boston Public Radio on GBH. Listener contributions pay for the program and keep it on the air. You don't have to give much to make a difference. Please make a difference by giving now at gbhnews.org or by calling 888-897-9424. You know, I don't even know why I'm talking here during this play. Listen to this. I mean, this is like a child, Marjorie. 
<laughs> doing that. What are you doing, Marjorie? Marjorie cranking, wants to say cranking, I'm cranking the Eton emergency, emergency, right. emergency crank radio. That's right. It's not emergency radio. Oh, emergency crank, crank radio. radio. Yep. Okay, Thank go you. ahead. Okay. Go ahead. For ten dollars a month and a hundred. It's driving me nuts. By the way, ten dollars a month or hundred twenty dollars <laughs> all at once. You get the Eton emergency crank. Radio. By the way, this really is the real deal. I'm not saying the other things are not. This is a very utilitarian, if that's the right word thing. It's got a flashlight if you have an emergency. You can charge your cell phone. You can get AM, FM. You can get a National Weather Service if you're stuck on Mount Washington or whatever it is. And you don't need a battery. The battery can't die because the battery's irrelevant because you cranked the thing. That's right. So by, you get that by going to 888-897-9424 <coughs> or go online at gbhnews.org. One last quick thing. If you either can't afford the 10 bucks a month or you're not interested in the emergency crank radio, which Marjorie could not imagine, then you give whatever you can give if you like what we and our colleagues are doing at uh, GBH Radio here. Okay, I just got this text from an anonymous texter. Yeah. I received an Eton emergency crank radio many years ago as a pledge gift. I love it, use it every day as the radio in the bathroom and the radio I take outside so I can listen to us, Jim, and the radio. Tracy, very happy while I weed the garden. But please tell people the radio can also be plugged in to keep it charged. It comes with a cord to use with a USB connection so you don't necessarily have to crank it all the time as I've been demonstrating. Oh, too bad. Yeah, so that's the deal. This is our gift for today, and it's only available to 2 o'clock, because I think the people that do pledge know how, how fond I am of the Eton Crank Radio, and they want me to have an opportunity to tell you all about it for pledge. But uh, we do these pledge breaks every once in a while, as I always say, so we don't have commercials, and mm -hmm. we are very grateful for what people uh, donate to us, because we are free, and more than 70% of our budget comes from listener support from people like you. So if you listen to us and you like what you hear, you like what you hear the rest of the day at GBH, we've got the culture show coming on right after us. And I think these guys and gals sound terrific on the culture show, Jared Bonin and his crew. So whatever you can give, we really appreciate it. You can give 10 bucks a month or... Whatever you can give, we really appreciate and it. And as Marjorie said, we are free in the show. Uh, but unfortunately, we're going to have to work for free unless you call 888-897-9424. Go to online at gbhnews.org. Next pledge break, we'll read some of these incredible comments that people are kind enough to make when they're making a donation. They really mean a lot to us. 888-897-9424 or gbhnews.org. Welcome back to Boston Public Radio, Jim Browdy and Marjorie Egan, and we are thrilled. Uh, Live Music Friday is coming up at the library, all ahead of the all-women Divas of Soul show tomorrow at 8 at Arlington's fabulous historic Regent Theater. We're joined by some of the most gifted voices Boston has ever produced, sitting here while well, standing here with us right now. Athene Wilson and Darlene Wynn have sung for the best, and they'll be singing some of the most beloved music of the last 50 years in a couple of minutes here. Leon Beale, I was listening to you last night. By the way, you are unbelievable, too. Leon, an incredible performer, is here as well. He's the man behind this quarterly series at the Regent, though he refers himself to himself humbly as the fly in the ointment. You are one <laughs> hell of a fly, my friend. For yeah. more information on tomorrow night's show at 8 o'clock, the website is Regent Theater. Theater is spelled R-E at the end. RegentTheater.com. Athene, Darlene, Leon, welcome to all three of us. Great to thank see you. you. Yeah, thank, you so, thank you very much for coming in. So, Leon, tell us what this is all about. Well, there, there is an audience, I feel, that is basically underserved in our community. And the music that we grew up on is the basically the soundtrack of our lives, okay? So I try to address a lot of that through the performances that we do. Um, we go back as far as the 50s mm -hmm. and move right on up to current day, but mo we don't get too far into the current day stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> we can all listen to the old stuff. We love the old stuff, the right? Exactly. We heard you recently at the incredible memorial for Mel King and you were you up it was so, so beautiful Thank what you. you did and we heard you singing this morning you and Darlene are long time buddies from what I understand is that true absolutely yeah. how long time is long time oh we don't want us to go there <laughs> <laughs> okay so at least how did it all come about I know you're tight with Leon too what's the connection between the two of you um, church and uh, you know different um, gospel choirs that uh, we've come through different shows that we've been at whoops so while your headset fell off, we can talk, uh, 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 Darlene. Yeah. So you were, were you kids when the two of you first? Oh, pretty much. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. Yeah. Uh, yes? Yes. And Small so, head. Darlene, give us a little sense of what you're going to be doing tomorrow night at the uh, region. Um, I believe we're doing a tribute to the likes of 
Tina Turner, mm-hmm. um, Gladys Knight, Gladys Knight Donna Summers. Mm-hmm. Whom Jean- you've met, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I read that. Mm-hmm. That was wild. What did you think? Mm. Uh, well, <laughs> we, we, we both kind of met, we both met her. Unfortunately, when I met her, it was because of a funeral of, of her family oh, member. Oh. Um, she was very gracious. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, surreal moment, but um, it, was, it was good. She was yeah. very down to earth, and we loved her. So do we have any idea what that uh, symbol in the background is, or we're working on that? Yeah, we're okay. working on that. Okay. Uh, 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 okay, we can do that in a, a second. And in a minute, I believe, Darlene, you're going to sing first, yes. right? We're going to do that in a yes. couple. We'll get to that in a couple of seconds. You guys, well, tell us a little bit. We're going to talk to uh, one of the co-owners of the region in a minute. Tell us about the theater, which is really a gem, Leon. Yes, it really is. Uh, when I was looking for places to actually start doing the shows, I went to the region, and I met Leland and Rick, and they were very gracious. They invited us in. The service that we get is great. Mm-hmm. The, the accommodations that they give us is great. And then when I talked to some of the patrons, they would tell us the same thing, that we were treated very well. Mm-hmm. They gave us a lot of respect. So when you get that combination, mm-hmm. you know, we keep coming back. So. You know, Leon, you mentioned that there's not enough venues. And I think you talked about this as well, seeing that when you get to, uh, you know, hear a performance like yours, the place is packed because yeah. there's not that many opportunities. But, Leon, you also talked about the money. I mean that that <laughs> he just made a face <laughs> if yeah. you're not watching. So on I mean, we're stream. back. We're back. Stuck in the 1970s for for pay. I mean oh, that's pretty yeah. pathetic. As as performers, I don't do clubs unless somebody you know calls me and asks me if I'll set in for them yeah. or help them out because the clubs pay basically what we were making back in the 70s. Yeah. Okay. And back in the 70s, all we had to do was show up and perform. Now they want us to bring an audience, do the promotion. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. For me, I'd rather stay home and watch TV. Okay? <laughs> which but is why? why? Which why? is why I started doing what we're doing now. But why is that? Because as our late colleague Brian O'Donnell used to say, live music is where it's at, right? You go exactly. to see live music, it's a great night out. So I would think... Listen, that- they're, they're cleaning up. They're selling food, they're selling liquor, they're charging right. at the door, and then they're giving the performers crumbs. Aww. And as long as people keep going for it, they'll keep doing it. I stay home. Mm. Wow. You're, you're, sh- you're nodding in agreement with Leon here. It's Do you want to give us your two cents? Of very thing? much the okie doke, you know. Yeah. If you keep, you accept it, then it's going to be the way it is. So we try to pick and choose where we go. Um, live music is live music, and people appreciate it. And we definitely want more of this in venues. So if people could come together and support that. I think that would work. Well, can I tell you also, one of the reasons I love the region beyond its history is, it, what is it, 500 seats? Mm-hmm. And if there's a perfect size, it, it is so intimate. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just, it's, it's beautiful. You're going to sing first, Darlene, correct? Yes. What are you going to sing? And then you can put your headset quietly down and we'll talk to your colleagues while you're getting set up. What are you singing? I'm singing t- Tina Turner, What's Love Got to Do With so, It? So, wait a second. Is that intimidating, <laughs> singing a song by one of the greatest <laughs> artists in the history of the world? Well, I'd like to think I do her a little justice. Yes, you yeah. do. Okay, that's <laughs> That's a good answer. So intimidation is not one of my... <laughs> I mean, I love not, that. not tooting a horn or whatever, but... She can handle this. I can, yeah. So if you can put your headset down quietly and go uh, over you know, there and meet your company. We had an opportunity to talk to some of the players that were in the, the, the play about Tina Turner's life. And um, we, we could see, see the play about Tina Turner's life. And I'm always struck by this. And I was struck by this last week when we went uh, and saw the, the girl from North Country that was doing the, the musical about Bob Dylan music. The people who do live music are so talented. You know, you talk about not getting the money. I mean, and I was saying, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio is a good, good he's a good actor, but he can mm-hmm. get to do the thing 17 times to get it right, whereas you guys have to sing. Oh, we're running out of time. Okay, i got to shut up. Well, good, there was no question there anyway. <laughs> so, uh, uh, here is... Uh, but, uh, uh, it's, we, you're so talented and don't get enough praise for it and money for it. That was basically Darlene it. Darlene Wynn <laughs> doing justice and then some to <laughs> Tina Turner, What's Love Got to Do With It? Thank you. Physical, only life. 
say accompanying that was spectacular you're listening to boston divas of oh soul you're going to God. hear some more after a quick pledge break you're listening to boston public radio you're going to hear some more music up next after this pledge 89.7 gbh think about it for three hours every day you get to hear thought-provoking conversations on local national and international issues for free it only happens with your support, so please support your Boston Public Radio listening by calling 888-897-9424 or giving online at gbhnews.org. Our number again, 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. Uh, when you, um, we are free, and 70% of our budget comes from listener support, people that are generous like you that can throw us some money at these pledge breaks we have occasionally uh, occasionally every few months during the year because we are free and those gifts are what support this show and other shows and what goes on at this radio station 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What are you looking at? Can I interrupt for what? a second? What? You can come to the library today. Yeah, I know. Or you can go streaming today and hear these two, wait till you hear her buddy here sing it. These two women, where else do you get something like this? We always talk about the governor comes on, which is great. The attorney general spends an hour. The mayor... Where do you get this? For free, I should say. And sitting here, look That's at right. the faces of Boston's the people. Boston's divas of soul. Well, they are. <laughs> I mean, they're unbelievable. So it's wonderful. We love the Eton Emergency Crank yeah, Radio. we do. Margie in particular. I'll I like one too. I have you. one in my trunk. Why don't you crank That's it? Thank how you. It Ten dollars a month or one hundred and twenty dollars all ones. Eight 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 nine seven nine four two four. GBHnews.org. But stop and think for a minute. If you haven't decided to give yet, what you get. I mean, think about what you get, and just think about this 20 minutes that we're spending with these wonderful people, wonderfully talented people, in a time that is so miserable in so many ways, and it 
lights things up in a way that is really, I don't, nothing uplifts me. This uplifts me. It's spectacular. 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. Why don't you crank it a few more times? Well, let me just tell you a couple more things. Why, when the theme is singing, why don't you okay. crank it in the background? I'm not going to do that I think she'll like while that. these ladies are singing. Absolutely not. But here's the deal. As you say, Jim, it's called the Swiss Army Knife of Radios. It, it's It's got a... It's got a hand crank, LED flashlight built in, you can charge your cell phone. As somebody said to you, you can get a cord on it as well, so you can take it out to the garage or you can have it in the bathroom or you can use it wherever you want to use it. But the deadline to get the Eton Crank Radio is when our show ends today at 2 o'clock, so don't put it off. Wouldn't you like to be able to do this like I'm doing it? Oh, I didn't tell you about the antenna. Right? It's got an antenna on the top, too. Well, that is fabulous. Isn't that great? That is so really... here's the deal. 888. I'll tell you, I wasn't going to contribute, but now that I hear it as an antenna, sign me the hell up. <laughs> that's, that's the piece de <laughs> resistance. Piece de resistance is the antenna. 888-897-9424 oh or gbhnews.org. Welcome back to Boston Public Radio. Jim Browdy and Marjorie again. We're in the middle of listening to and talking to some incredible performers who are part of Boston's best divas of soul. Eight o'clock tomorrow night at the wonderful Regent Theater. RegentTheaterRE.com. Com? Is that right? Com. Uh, uh, to get tickets tomorrow night at eight o'clock. And you just heard from Darlene, who is surreal. You're going to hear from Athena in a minute. I don't know where the hell Leon went, but he's disappeared. <laughs> and in any case, you should check him out online, too. We'll tell you how to get their CDs and all that sort of stuff in a minute. Before we return to these women, I've known one of the co-owners, Leland Stein, for about 100 years, who's standing here by a mic. I'm reading a story the other day. It got me very nervous, Leland. I just need a quick response. You guys are selling the theater. Is there a chance there'll be a region theater no more, or it's just going to change hands? No chance at all. Nothing is imminent, and it's just a... My partner, Rick, Rick Stavros, is retiring, looking to retire. Uh, we have plenty of time to find the right people to continue the legacy and what we've been doing. I love what I do too much to I know leave. You do. So you put something out there, people think the worst. But this is really a positive thing to continue what's ha been happening for 100 plus years. Raise your right hand and say what I just said is the truth. Go ahead. <laughs> I swear. Okay, that's fine. That's Leland Stein, one of the co-owners of one of the best theaters in Greater Boston, where these two women will be performing tomorrow night. So, a scene. I was reading your biography. You've had quite a career. You got the the uh, CD. It's about time. And you've basically performed all over the place. Well, I've been blessed to do so. Yes. Yeah. So, how's that happen? How do you wind up in Germany or the Caribbean or the United Arab Emirates? How's that happen? Oh, so, well, let's talk about Dubai. Yeah. I had the opportunity to um, check off a bucket list. I sang with Gloria Gaynor. As oh, one my gosh. With, as one of her background singers. It was wonderful. It was yeah. wonderful. It seems like such a foreign, faraway place to me. Was it neat and fun? Or? It was awesome. But, you know, p music brings people together. Yeah. It really does. And that was you know, the truth over there. So. Okay, can we get back local for a second? <laughs> if people want to find you, I'm not going to Germany to hear you. I'm sure it was great, but I want to, where do we find you? I mean, tomorrow night we're going to find you at the Great Region Theater, 8 o'clock. Go get tickets, regiontheaterre.com. Where do we find you, Darlene, when you're not at the Region Theater? I'm regularly, I, I am a, the, the president and the music um, director of a women's choir at Concord Baptist Church. Oh, that's nice. fabulous. So I feel like that's my second home. That's fabulous. <laughs> so and besides that, uh, pretty much all over the place. And how about you? Um, I, I'll hail at Greater Love Tabernacle. Oh, <laughs> um, as well as, you know, other venues, local venues. Um, can we say names? Sure. Absolutely. Um, Grace, Grace by, by Nia. Nia. Oh, Nia Grace's place Abs in the yes, seaport. Yes, oh, great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Next and, Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> and um, actually the 24th, it's a private event, but yeah. How about um, CDs? How do we find CDs from AthenWilson.com. AthenWilson.com. Mm -hmm. How about you? And mine is Darlene Wynn on CDBaby.com. On CDBaby.com. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't want to ask any more questions and run into the time. So I have time. Well, you know what we can do? Actually, you, if you don't mind, Athene, can go sure. join your accompanist. Okay. And we can Thank talk you, to Darlene, Darlene for a second quick here. question about, uh, you had a little incident with Miles Davis? You oh, yeah. Um, what was that? The, I sang with a gospel, gospel group called Family, and we were invited, um, Miles Davis was coming to Boston to sing, and we were invited to sort of welcome him in, and um, as we're singing and they're approaching, he and Cicely Tyson are walking into the lobby. Oh, wow. He just kind of turned his back to us. As if oh! He went... And, turn, and she's apologizing. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. But we were, like, singing our heads off. And so I thought, Miles Davis is a cranky guy? Uh, well, it, she said it's kind of his way. He okay. just 
if you notice some of his performance, he turns his back to the audience. Yeah, he was pretty talented. I think but give he, him a break. He can do that. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, now, I didn't ask you. I should have. You're going to sing Get Here by Alita Adams, right? Which is one of the most beautiful songs mm -hmm. ever. Athene, here you are. Take it away. Darlene Wynn and Athene Wilson, their show, Greater Boston's Best Divas of Soul, is tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Oh, yeah, at Arlington's nice. Regent Theatre. For more information, go to regenttheatre.com. That's R-E-G-E-N-T, regenttheatre.com. Thank you all very much and for coming Yushin in. And Yushin Han, and thank you. Yes, the accompanist thank you from for, Berkeley. Thank exactly, you. on the piano. That was thank incredible. You very much. Just Up beautiful. next, Kelly Crossley. You're you listening so to Boston Public Radio, 89.7 GBH, live from the Boston Public Library. 
And Boston Public Radio is made possible today by our listener contributors. That's just how GBH works. The money that you give helps keep Jim and Marjorie and their hardworking staff on the radio. So please sign up as a sustaining member now during our spring membership drive. You can do so online at gbhnews.org or call us at 888-897-9424. Good afternoon. I'm Mark Cohen. I'm joined in the studio today uh, by Liz Lavoy. The goal right now is to receive 15 contributions in the next six minutes. That goal is so important because it helps pay for your future GBH listening. We suggest giving what you can, $100 or maybe it's $15 a month on the sustaining plan. That's just 15 more people to give with six minutes left. GBHnews.org or call 888-897-9424. And as Marjorie would tell you, we have the Eton Emergency Radio. It's a special offer today, $10 a month on our sustainer plan or a one-time gift of $120. I won't crank it up for you, but that is just one of the many features of the Eton Radio. You get your AM, your FM, seven national weather bands channels. It's got a three LED flashlight built in, solar powered as well. So much to love about this. You can never have enough in your home, in your car. Take it with you if you go hiking or camping. A great deal at $10 a month. A special offer today, though. It goes away at 2 o'clock this afternoon when Jim and Marjorie wrap up their show. So get in while the getting's good. 888-897-9424. Ask for the Eton Radio. You can check it out online as well. Look for the donate button at gbhnews.org. Why pursue happiness when you can have it come to you? Sounds ridiculous? Not not really. Isn't that why you listen to GBH? Whether it's in the car, in the kitchen, in the bedroom, we help turn the mundane minutes of your life into memorable moments. Yes, you hear the news of the day, and sometimes that's hard to take, but there are also moments of discovery and delight that bring a little joy into your life. Support that listening and give at gbhnews.org or call 888-897-9424. You listen to GBH throughout the years, so why not spread your membership out the same way by signing up as a sustaining member. That means you make a reoccurring monthly contribution from your bank account or your credit card. This way, your contribution, it keeps giving all year long. And it just takes a couple of minutes to set up. Find out how easy it is by going to the phone at 888-897-9424. Just as easy to sign up online. Again, look for the donate button at gbhnews.org. Thank you to all of those who are helping us meet our goal this hour. Elizabeth and Carlisle, she says she gives because Jim and Marjorie are the voices of reason in this crazy world. Another thank you to Susan in Somerset who says GBH is their favorite station. They love Jim and Marjorie. Join Elizabeth, join Susan, give online at gbhnews.org or call 888-897-9424. Yeah, that's right. We hope you'll do your part right now. Support GBH and all the listening you do. Our goal now down to 12 more contributions we're asking for in these final three minutes of the hour. 12 contributions. We hope one of them is yours. Please take those couple of minutes right now. Go to the phone, 888-897-9424, or go online securely at gbhnews.org. And just a reminder, you can help us meet that goal, and we'll thank you with the Eton Emergency Radio. Today, only support GBH at $10 a month, and you'll receive the Eton Rechargeable Radio that gets AM, FM, and the National Weather Service channels. Normally, you'd have to give $180 today. It's just $10 a month. Month. Give online at gbhnews.org or call 888-897-9424. GBH depends on listener support for really just a little more than 70% of our operating budget. Your contribution right now is so much more important than ever because it means that we can keep the station on the air and make our quarterly payments to NPR. So please be one of the many listeners who give to GBH right now. You can do so online at gbhnews.org or call us 888 888- Eight nine seven nine four two four. You might be thinking, I'll make that contribution later. So let me ask you, when will that actually be? It's not the kind of thing that goes on the calendar. And as much as you rely on GBH, it probably won't be top of mind when you're listening, when you're not listening. You've decided it's important to support GBH. Please take two minutes right now to get it done. All we need is the basic contact and payment information, whether you give online or over the phone. Give online at gbhnews.org or call 888 888- And a quick reminder, your $10 a month contribution on our sustainer plan will get you the E-Town Emergency Radio. It's a special offer. We're only making it available today until 2 o'clock when Jim and Marjorie are done. $10 a month, 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. And just eight contributions in the next couple of minutes, your gift will help pay for the news you trust. 
and help make this membership drive a success. Give at gbhnews.org or call 888-897-9424. 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org, and thanks so much for your support. Support for GBH comes from you and Revision Energy. Sunbug Solar is now part of Revision Energy, a solar installer committed to being a renewable energy partner for New England and working to fight climate change. Learn more at sunbugsolar.com. And MFS Investment Management. For 100 years, MFS has been committed to helping investors, investment professionals, and institutions build secure futures. You can find active investing strategies and insights at mfs.com. I'm Nightside News anchor Mary Blake, and you and I are listening to 89.7 WGBH HD1 Boston, online at gbhnews.org. GBH News with NPR, what matters to you? I'm Jim Browdy, ahead on Boston Public Radio, live from the Boston Public Library. GBH's Callie Crossley joins us on Trump's latest money woes, news about Beyonce's return to her Texas roots and her upcoming album, and she'll reflect on the passing of veteran, groundbreaking black journalist Sarah Ann Shaw. Plus, satirist Andy Barwitz has relaunched his much-loved Barwitz report. He's now on Substack. We'll talk with him about his triumphant return. I'm Marjorie Egan, and Michael Scalfo and Brian Moy have built their restaurant businesses around the food of their youth. Michael at Josephine and Somerville, Brian at Chinatown's China Pearl. They'll talk about their friendship, their love of food, Michael's 100-pound weight loss, and yes, Jim, they're bringing you something to eat. All that ahead, Boston Public Radio, 89.7 GBH. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Lakshmi Singh. The House of Representatives has passed the remaining six appropriations bills for fiscal year 2024, setting up a tight turnaround for the Senate to vote on the package before a midnight deadline to avoid a partial government shutdown. The package includes defense, homeland security, financial services and general government, labor HHS, the legislative branch and state foreign operations funding funds the federal government until the end of the fiscal year that's September 30th the bill needed two-thirds support to pass the final vote was 286 to 134 NPR's Barbara Sprint has more details about the package the package represents the second and final set of bipartisan spending bills for the year it includes defense homeland security labor and state foreign operations both democrats and republicans have claimed victories in the compromise legislation republicans point to increased funding for strengthening the southern border including an increase in the number of agents and ice detention beds democrats are touting a one billion dollar increase for child care and early learning programs Barbara Sprint, NPR News, the Capitol. Shareholders have voted to approve a merger of Trump Media and Technology Group and Digital World Acquisition. Former President Donald Trump stands to make billions of dollars as the media company behind his social media platform, Truth Social, can soon be traded publicly. But the windfall may not come soon enough to help him with his legal troubles. NPR's Raphael Nam explains. Truth Social could start trading by next week. That would be great news for Trump. His stake in the new company could be worth over $3 billion. Trump could use the money, given his legal troubles, but he may not be able to cash in immediately. That's because he wouldn't be allowed to sell his shares for another six months. But he could try to work out a deal. That's NPR's Rafael Nam reporting. Texas's new controversial immigration law is on hold, but other Republican-led states are advancing their own bills to allow local police to arrest and deport people who are suspected of being in the country illegally. Here's NPR's Ryland Barton. There are at least five other states where Republican governors and legislatures are considering bills that would make illegally crossing the border a state crime. In Iowa, undocumented immigrants would face up to two years in prison for illegally re-entering the state after a deportation. That bill's currently on Governor Kim Reynolds' desk. A Georgia measure would punish local and state law enforcement for not verifying a suspect's immigration status. It gained momentum after the killing of nursing student Lakin Riley earlier this year. And Republican lawmakers in Oklahoma 
Oklahoma say they want their own Texas-style migrant law. A recent Gallup poll shows immigration is the issue most cited by U.S. adults as the country's most important problem. Ryland Barton, NPR News. It's NPR. Good afternoon. With the latest from the GBH Newsroom, I'm Henry Santoro. A second suspect has been arrested in connection to a triple shooting in Lynn that happened in December. In a statement released today, 19-year-old William Baez was uh, arrested on floor in Florida and charged with three counts of armed assault with intent to murder. Several law enforcement agencies were working on this case, including the U.S. Marshals Service. Baez was found in Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, Lauder Hill, Florida, and is being held at the Broward County Jail, where he's waiting to be handed over to police in Massachusetts. The shooting happened the day after Christmas, right near a pizza hut in Lynn. Holtec, the owner of the Pilgrim Nuclear Power Station, spoke to our Cape-based sister station, CAI, about what would happen to the radioactive water from the plant if it were shipped out of state, as local activists hope. Well, Holtec spokesman Patrick O'Brien says that under the company's current waste contract with a facility in Texas, that water would be mixed with a solidifying medium and then buried. But, O'Brien says, shipping is very expensive. There is a pretty significant cost associated with that because the, the facilities that take that charge per gallon, and it's a pretty pretty hefty price to do so. Despite the cost, he says the company is more concerned about safety because tanker trucks could spill radioactive water in the event of a crash. Holtec is still seeking permission to discharge that water into Cape Cod Bay. It is 34 degrees in Boston. This is GBH News. Support for NPR comes from NPR stations. Other contributors include Indeed, designed to be an end-to-end hiring solution for businesses of all sizes to attract, interview, and hire candidates, all from one platform. Learn more at Indeed.com slash NPR. Howdy, I am Marjorie Egan. Welcome to our number two of Boston Public Radio. We are broadcasting live from the Boston Public Library and streaming at youtube.com slash GBH News. I want to mention that Tuesday at the Boston Public Library from 11 to noon, we're going to be joined by Maura Healy, the governor of the Commonwealth. She will take our questions and yours. Hello again, Jim. I'd also like to announce if you just missed the Divas of Soul, you're a fool. Let me tell you that. <laughs> yeah. By the way, one last thing before we introduce our next guest. More uh, fun for the GOP House of Representatives that lunatic Marjorie Taylor Greene is announcing as we speak that she will move to vacate the chair, meaning that she, I assume and some of her fellow lunatics, are going to be voting to dump Speaker Johnson, which means we start all over again. In any case, we're joined now, that's moaning in the background, is Callie. <laughs> We're now joined at the desk by Callie Crossley. <laughs> Callie is the host of Under the Radar with Callie Crossley. You can catch that Sunday nights right here on 89.7 at 6. You'd also hear her Callie commentaries on Mondays for GBH's Morning Edition. She also co-hosts GBH's Culture Show, which not only airs daily at 2 o'clock right here on 89.7, we'll be here live today at 2 o'clock. So either stick around or if you're not here, come on down. Hello, Callie Crossley. Hello. Hey there. Hello, Callie Crossley. So speaking of those who might be slightly unhinged in the the GOP, the former president is still trying to get together his uh, bond for the $454 million he owes because of uh, defrauding the, the state of New York City. Uh, and state the, of New York. State of New York, excuse exactly. me. And the attorney general, of course, Whatever. Letitia James, has talked about having her eye on different properties uh, that he owns. Well, I want to play some sound. This is from Frank Luntz. He's a GOP pollster. He was on CNN last night talking about what it would mean if the attorney general actually does seize Donald Trump's property. You're going to create the greatest victimhood of 2024, and you're going to elect Donald Trump. If they take his stuff, he's going to say that this is proof that the federal government and the establishment and the swamp in Washington and all the politicians across the country and the attorneys generals and all of this, that this is a conspiracy. Do you, do you think he's right? Do you think that this is something that's going to put people over the edge and, I mean, be, beyond well, the Trump MAGA well, crowd? Well, that, that's, that's the point. I, I don't know beyond. Yeah. Uh, because, as you know, um, some of the early polls, and 
I, I'm a little skeptical of early polls as well, but some of the early polls do suggest, uh, well, not suggest, the folks have just said, if the man goes to jail or, or is convicted of something, I'm gonna really have to rethink my vote. That's even in the group of people who are now supporting him. So it obviously is gonna play a part in some way. Yeah. Um, you know, what I'd like to think would happen is that people would sort of drill down to some of the details by which to make their decision. For example, the thing that sticks out to me is that um, he can't cover this $454 million bond and 30, 30 companies that could have uh, given him the bond for it would not. So does that mean anything to people? Like there are 30 individual companies, are they under some conspiracy to say, we don't think this is a good bet for our company? Um, and so, therefore, we're not going to secure a bond for yeah. him. To me, that's um, just as powerful as his running around saying they're, they're out to get me. But I don't know that people separate and, and highlight some of these facts. To me, that's a huge one. Can I, I, yeah. I, I think I tend to sort of agree with <laughs> Kelly. I mean, so much of his calling card, I think, to the sycophants, those who are with him no matter what he says about it and does, is this is a wildly successful billionaire business guy. Yeah. And so while the MAGA people probably are gonna get angrier, I mean, they can only vote once each, I hope, and this may be naive and wishful thinking, I hope when there's a visual of them taking let's hope Trump Tower is what they lock him out of, or his penthouse or something. I hope that at least people on the margins, and the race is close enough, it'll matter, mm -hmm. will say that further proof that the, the emperor, in this case, doesn't have any clothes. And so, I, by the way, Luntz, I don't know if you saw this last night, the sound was not quite as dramatic. He looks at the camera oh and he gosh. says, M remember this minute, the moment a piece of property of Donald Trump is seized, Donald Trump is re-elected to the presidency. It was a very dramatic kind of thing. And he's sort of competent, uh, uh, mm -hmm. as pollsters go. Mm -hmm. But I am hopeful, as you are, that on the margins, uh, this will do more damage to his well, reputation and support than... Chuck Todd from NBC <sighs> said the same thing yesterday. What did he say? Not quite as dramatically as Luntz did, that he thought that this would turn Trump into a martyr. Well, but, well I mean, he's already with a martyr who, though? for a lot of people. Well, that's yeah. the question. Is yeah. it just with his MAGA group, or is yeah. it with those group the Republicans that voted for Nikki Haley and, and maybe not happy with him? I don't know. But I want, Wait, how is a Haley supporter, who was primarily voting for Haley, because uh, 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 Donald Trump, Trump is, what's his face, as George Conway said, is a narcissistic psychopath, what, 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 what about this is going to cause a Haley supporter to say, oh, I was wrong. I've got to embrace this. Well, well I hope not, but I don't know. A lot of um, political analysts say that in the end, people go home, meaning they go home to the party, um, no matter who is fronting the party, even if they have said all kinds of stuff and voted many different ways prior to that. So there is that. And remember, we're talking about as I am reminded constantly by the people who study these things, a small number of votes in a small number of states. Yeah. So if you go this way or that way, then that makes a determination about who may be president. Well, you know, mm -hmm. speaking of going home, though, this wasn't on our agenda for today. We've discussed this a lot lately, most recently with the uh, publisher of the Bay State Banner who says he doesn't believe the polls. Mm -hmm. uh, huge numbers, like in the, and Andrew Cabral agreed with him, 10 to 25% of uh, people of color voters who voted for Joe Biden last time, particularly younger ones, mm -hmm. have no intention of voting for them again. Some question the polls, some say, well, people do go back home, as you said before. But if those numbers hold, particularly amongst Latinos and young black men, Donald Trump is the next president of the United States. Right, if people don't vote, then yes, those, the, the no voters are making a statement as well, yeah. and they can tip it either way. Uh, so, but I don't, we'll see what happens there. Um, and because here he is saying, all right, people, here's your more um, um, forgiveness on, um, on loans, on student loans. I told you I'd do it. I've managed to do it, even though they keep stopping me various ways. Here I am trying to you know, get the border together, even though they voted against it. And the guy who would be president said, don't take a compromise. They so, you know, so it depends on how they are able to, as many people have said at this desk, how are you able to get that mm -hmm. message across, I think. Mm. So um, Eva Birch is a Arizona state senator yeah, who's had a lot of fertility problems. She's had a miscarriage. She's had uh, at least a couple of non-viable pregnancies, meaning that the, that the fetus would not survive. Uh, and, and as I said, she's from Arizona. Uh, so because Arizona laws 
mandate that you have to have this vaginal ultrasound and be told all about the other alternatives for abortion uh, before pregnancy. Here she goes in with a non-viable pregnancy to get an abortion, has to go through this. Anyway, that's my long-winded introduction to the sound of her talking on the state Senate floor about her plans to get an abortion. A few weeks ago, I learned that against all odds, I am pregnant. But after numerous ultrasounds and blood draws, we have determined that my pregnancy is once again not progressing and is not viable. And once again, I have scheduled an appointment to terminate my pregnancy. Arizonans deserve the freedom and the liberty to make those decisions for themselves. I will never try to force someone to have an abortion. And nobody should ever try to prevent me from having mine. What do you make of this? That's pretty bold yeah. um, for her to say. We should note that she has, uh, she did give birth to two sons, um, but as you pointed out, she's had many fertility problems. I'm just noting that um, in this moment, there are a lot of women like her who are coming forward and being yeah. public. The woman who was in Texas, of course, is the, probably the most well-known one. She went to Maine um, to get an abortion for a non-viable pregnancy. Um, other people have described uh, these women who want children, who is, is not the image in the mind of people who keep trying to ban abortion. It's part of a whole spectrum, and yet here they are caught um, with clinicians who cannot make a, a clinical decision for them about their life or certainly about their physicality. And it's uh, pretty emotional. And it, what, well, you know, we could go on and on about this, Marjorie, but it, it, but it really gets me that somehow there seems to be a disconnect with these people who are making these laws that somehow something that's growing inside you is not connected to you <laughs> in a way that you can make a kind of clinic. Like, you know, yeah, just it, the law says, don't worry about it. It won't affect you anymore. Yeah. I mean, this is an emotional, psychological, and physical issue yeah and that is it's as though it has never taken into account by the people who are insistent that these women's a lives are not in danger or that clinicians are not the ones that should be making the decisions you know uh, uh, correct me if i'm wrong yeah. i don't know if it was the vaginal ultrasound that you mentioned it was some procedure that uh senator birch was required to have under state law that was it. right that her uh, doctor ultras, right. recommended against exactly right. and she had to have it right to qualify under state law because mm -hmm. these legislators yes. said this has got to be a prelude to getting an abortion. And when they say exception for life of the mother, with a 20-week woman that had to go to Maine from Texas, right. I mean, it was like, how, how close to death do we have to be? I mean, does her future fertility count? Does the emotional, right. does the damage to her uterus or any of these things matter? It's like, can you imagine a man having to be no. at death's door before he could get medical intervention? I, it's, it's, it's so enraging. I, but I, I will tell you the story that I just, um, I, I judge a, a contest, a journalism contest, and this story from ABC is in there featuring all of women like this who are in this position. One woman's story was so dramatic, she had gone back and forth to the hospital and they didn't want to do anything because they were afraid. So she made an appointment to the um, hair place the next day because she knew she was going to die. She said, the baby's going to die and I'm going to die. I don't want my mother to have to worry about how I look in the casket. That is a oh. quote. My God. That is a quote. Well, and, and the only thing that saved her is that she literally bled out at home. So then the doctor said, okay, please, please let me. Yeah. Because she was hemorrhaging. Yes. Keep in well, mind, by the way, as yes. context for this, we're about three months away from yeah. the Supreme Court deciding uh, about Mifepristone. And did you not tell me, what did you say this morning? 63% of abortions today. Is that right? Are, are Medi yes. medical. Medi medical. medical. I mean, not, That's right. What do you call them? Medical or non-medical? I guess those are non-medical. Medical right? abortions. Yeah. Because, yeah. because abortion has been banned in right. so many places. So right. women yeah. are getting Mifepristone pills from right. uh, around the country so that they can uh, get the abortions that they uh, need to get. So it's Medication less, assisted is med the yes. problem. Thank you, Medication Zoe. Medication assisted. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, we got to take a break. Oh, we have to take a break. Yeah, we do. All right, we'll get back. We'll talk some more with Kelly. We'll talk about the Eton emergency crank no, radio not. again, we're, Marjorie. We get, yeah, yes, that's right. But when we get back, we're going to talk yes, to Kelly Sarah Ann Shaw that it. everybody knows around Boston. And she was a wonderful woman, a wonderful journalist. She's died. We're going to talk about that when we get back. But right now, we're going to take a quick break to talk about the Eton crank radio. If you listen to Boston Public Radio three hours a day, that's 15 hours a week, 60 hours a month, 
and 720 hours a year. Maybe it's time you pitched in. Call 888-897-9424 or give online at gbhnews.org. Okay, Marjorie, crank the damn thing. Okay, what Marjorie is doing, which gives her great pleasure, it does. is she is cranking the <laughs> Eton emergency crank rate. It's rather pathetic, actually. Uh, uh, and the reason she's the sound doing effect. that, okay, is because it's fun and mm-hmm. does provide yep. some sound, I guess. This thing, this Eton emergency crank rate, for which you don't need a battery, that's why you have the crank. That's right. Uh, as AMFM National Weather Service. Uh, I'm you, charging it, Jim. That's great, Marjorie. And you can also <laughs> charge it with solar power. And it's got an LED flash... Okay, thank you. Thank you. It's got an LED flashlight built in. I'm exhausted. In, and it can, it can give you... That's the only downside. The emergency yeah. crank radio, if you give twice the money, a person comes with it who yep. cranks it for you. In any case, $10 Just a month, $120 all at once. On my bicep. And I started to say, and then I forgot, you can also charge your phone if your phone dies, which is really that's huge right. in an emergency. You just crank the thing, and you get it for $10 a month, $120 all at once by calling 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. I want to say, yes. we've gotten some wonderful messages today. Oh, yes. Jim and Marjorie feel like, this is uh, Billy from Socrates. Uh, Jim and Marjorie feel like pals, like having company at home. Dean in Amesbury accompanies me during my morning and afternoon commutes. Also, Jim and Marjorie keep me mon- uh, company in my home office each midday. And unfortunately, Laura from Brookline, who was very kind to give us money, says, tell Jim to be nicer to Marjorie because she is a gem. You are a gem, Marjorie. There you go. Everybody says that, Jim. That Thank you. you. Need to be nice what are you writing me. a note home? What I, are you I doing I lost here? my messages. Okay, and I'm fine. Them that I lost my messages Thank so I you. can get some more. Yes. Okay. So here's the deal. Yeah. Um, I say this all the time, but why not say it again? Say it again. We're not having these occasional pledge breaks, which I know, I mean, even though it may be fun to crank the radio and all this, this kind of stuff, fun. this is not probably the favorite segments uh, for people that listen to us. But if we did not have these segments... Then we would have to have commercials, and the commercials would be five, six, sometimes even seven minutes long, three times an hour. That would be really horrible. So this is in lieu of commercials because GBH comes to you for free, and uh, we need support because 70% plus of our funding comes from the generosity of leaders like you, of uh, listeners like you. I, I just say. got a note, by the way. They said the giving goes up exponentially when you're cranking. So can you be cranking I, while I you're can't. talking? I'm, I'm worn out. Oh, I mean, you are? Yeah, 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 I should have done That's my, very sad. My, my push-ups before yeah, doing have. the uh, Eton Crank Radio. But anyway, the deal is this. Uh, if you can donate something, we really appreciate it. If you can give 10 bucks a month, that would be really great. That gets you the Eton Tank ra- Crank Radio. But if you can't, you know, we are not proud. We'll take whatever you can get. 888-897-9424 or GBA. News.org. Welcome back to Boston Public Radio. Marjorie Egan and Jim Browdy. We're live at the library, streaming at youtube.com slash GBH News. Next day we're here is Tuesday. The governor, Governor Healy, joins us for an hour from 11 to 12. Take your calls and our questions and our whatever. You know what I mean. And we're joined now at the rejoin at the desk by Kelly Crossley. Okay, I mentioned, Callie, before we went to the break, that we were going to talk about Sarah and Shaw. Mm-hmm. worked at BZ for years, original member of the Say Brother team, which became Basic Black, which you were the host of. For at many, GBH. Yeah, yeah. GBH, mm-hmm. that's right. The, mm-hmm. uh, you were the host of for a long time, mm-hmm. too. So here's a little clip of her. She just passed away at 90 years old. Here's Sarah and Shaw. It costs you nothing but time to return a phone call. To mentor a student, to volunteer a few hours to help an organization, to listen to someone's story. Empowering children to survive and succeed is, you can't start too young. So you were quoted in Joey Kahn's uh, obituary of her. What did you have to say about Sarah Ann Shaw? She was as um, a force to be reckoned with, and she just was persistent. She just never, ever, ever gave up if she thought it was a righteous cause. Um, um, she wasn't mean. Um, she was just... Uh, you know, the, the word that people would use a lot about her is, you know, the, the conscience in the room or a moral center for a lot of people. She wasn't afraid to raise difficult subjects and stand by it. If everybody else didn't agree, that was okay. Again, she was, she was able to, to have those kinds of conversations. I think, you know, from a, from a personal standpoint, just having known her personally, observing that and learning something from about that, I think that her biggest legacy will be that um, all of the rest of us who came after her, I, I'm not from Boston, I did not start my career here, but it is, it is um, appropriate to say that for uh, many generations of us who came after her, she was a path breaker, yeah. um, she was a mentor, she was well respected, 
and she always held the door open. Um, and wow, you know, what a legacy. There are so many people across the country, not just here, who are mourning her death and also celebrating the life that she had and the work that she did. Just to be clear, you're suggesting it, but to be clear, she was the first black reporter at yes. a local news station yes, here in town, WBZ, right? Yes, at WBZ, yes, in 1969. By the way, yeah. you, know, you know how uh, there's certain people who, I only met her once ever, um, mm -hmm. I feel bad about. Mm -hmm. I was in awe, and mm -hmm. I really, there was a, was a presence around mm -hmm. her that, it's hard, I mean, you touch yeah, on it. It's really yeah. hard to describe, but she really was huge yes. in this community yeah. and, and, and didn't lord it over you. She was no. very welcoming. And as you said, Dora always a new kid at this yeah. kind of thing, and she was wonderfully yeah. welcoming and supportive. She was great. And the reporting was so good because she uh, was really curious about stuff, and she really wanted um, positive aspects of the community to be highlighted, and she wanted those issues that sort of never got any sunshine mm -hmm. at all to be raised as well. So, yeah. you know. And she was a local mm -hmm. woman, girls Latin, yeah. went to Boston Roxbury. University. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Uh, so she spent uh, she spent her, her whole life here. Yeah. Yeah. By, uh, by the way, if she was obsessed with the positive, she'd obviously have no place on this show. So <laughs> it's, uh, in any case, can we go well, from you know, a... it was a great, it was, I was just going to yeah. say, it was, I remember it was a great debate um, when I was at the Herald because there was a constant coverage of crime yes. in Rochester, uh, Rochester, yeah. Roxbury, mm -hmm. uh, Madpan, Dorchester. Mm -hmm. um, but so it was a debate because on the one hand, you don't want to be too heavy in the crime. On the other hand, you don't want to ignore it. Either. Yes. You know, so it was a constant debate in the newsrooms and I think she was at the center of that debate. Well, she was at the center debate. of saying there's more to uh, anybody's community than that and that never, uh, the other stuff never gets covered. Yeah, it was really no. hard to get mm -hmm. that stuff right. covered. That's Very right. hard. Yeah. So she mm -hmm. was a trailblazer in yeah. that regard Can we go to well. a legend of another kind? I'm going to play a little music and mm -hmm. you're going to, I hope, tell us why I played this song. Here's Beyonce in 2016 at the CMA Awards performing Daddy Problems. I think they were called the Dixie Chicks then. I'm not sure, but they're the chicks. Now, yeah. here's Beyonce and the Chicks. Came into this world Okay, why did I play that 2016 selection, Kelly Crossley? Because uh, that was uh, the song that was covered by, they were then, they had just changed their names to the Chicks, and that was Daddy Lessons, by the way. Oh, sorry. Um, she had done a piece uh, for, on the Lemonade track, which a lot of people know if they follow her, and many billions do, um, part of her renaissance um, path that she's been making in terms of new music and the direction she wants to take. And so she appeared, you know, as a surprise with them, and some people liked it and some people didn't. Um, and she didn't say anything about it at that point. And now, at this point, Act Two of the Renaissance is probably the whole album is all country, and it's called Cow Cowboy Carter, because as you know, her husband's last name is Carter, or her real husband of Jay-Z. And... Um, and so she's done two songs. She released two of them at the Super Bowl. Texas Hold'em is a blowaway hit. She is the first black woman to hit number one on the hot country, 100. Some stations were, well, I don't know if she's country enough. And then, you know, the Bayhive and everybody else came after them and said, oh, I don't think so. And so now they're playing it and happy to play it. Um, 16 Carriages has done pretty well, too. Dolly Parton has hinted that maybe she has covered Jolene on this album. The album drops at the end of the month. Um, and, you know, it's she, uh, as she has now finally made a statement about it, saying... Uh, I was made to feel unwelcome in a genre that actually has roots uh, in black America. And I just want to demonstrate that these are my roots too. She's a Texan, a Southern girl. Um, all of that is real for her. And she's been wearing cowboy f paraphernalia forever. So um, if the songs are anything like Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages, she has another hit on her hands and also an opportunity to demonstrate to other people how this is really roots music, uh, black roots music. I love that she was motivated yeah. too by being treated like you know what yeah. by some people in the audience at those awards, what, eight years ago. It's yeah. pretty intense. Yeah. So it wasn't under the radar with Kelly Crossley. We're doing a full hour with the mass politics profs who have a blog uh, by the same name. And we're talking about some of the things that you all have discussed here, but from their political analysis standpoint, including uh, Governor Healy's uh, saying that she does not want to support uh, the MCAS being removed as a graduation requirement, but as you all 
in conversation here this week brought up, okay, but what then? So uh, there is conversation about that. We're having a lot of conversation about all the roiling inside both parties, the Democratic and the Republican Party, as they try to figure out, you know, how to go after these small number of voters, as we've talked about, who are available to them. And what are the issues that are going to remain hot between now and November? You're not going to talk about the Marchioness of Chambray or whatever the hell her name is? <laughs> no. Chambray. Whatever it is. Chambray. Marjorie no. is really, I'm speaking for Marjorie, Chambray. is really disappointed. It's am. really a great oversight on your part. I'm she's a woman sorry. of great mystery. Too. Who is she? I'm sorry. Well, the she's a legend. She, Say that again, oh, please. Here we go. The Marchioness of Chambray. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Marchioness of Chambray. Do you, think, of Chambray. do you think that the future king of England is carrying on with the Marchioness of Chambray? Of course he is. I mean, you're a royal watcher. I wouldn't be surprised. wouldn't be surprised. would be surprised. Given Charles's history. Like father, yeah. like son. You know what he yeah. said this yeah. morning? He yeah. wanted to live in her trousers. I don't know where that came from, <laughs> but apparently, I don't know. Okay. That hasn't been confirmed. Yeah. No, Callie, good be. to see you. Yes. Culture <laughs> show, 2 o'clock, yes. right here live at the Boston Public that is Library. Correct. Callie this, Crossley. We've been speaking with GBH is Callie Crossley, host of Under the Radar with Callie Crossley, which you can catch Sunday nights, 89, 7, 6 o'clock. You can also hear Callie commentaries Mondays for GBH's Morning Edition, and Callie is co host of GBH's The Culture Show, which, as Jim just said, airs daily and Today, it airs live right here at the Boston Public Library, so if you're in the audience now, you might want to stick around for the Culture Show at 2. After a quick break, Saturday's Andy Borowitz is back with a Andy newly Borowitz. relaunched Borowitz Report. We can't wait. You're listening to Boston Public Radio, 89.7 GPH, broadcasting live from the Boston Public Library and streaming at youtube.com slash GBH News. Live, local, three hours a day, five days a week. Jim Browdy, Marjorie Egan, Boston Public Radio. It's here on GBH Radio because of your support. Now's your chance to keep the conversation going. Give online at gbhnews.org or call 888-897-9424. Okay, I lost my messages before, but I got them back. These oh, are people, great. These are people who, uh, so if I repeat some of them, Jim, you have to give me a little grace here. These are people who gave already, and we much appreciate it. Their listener comments, as they said, you read the one that said, I appreciate all the insightful and intellectual, meaningful conversations that happen every day here. I like that one. Yeah, I also read Linda from Nahan, who said, I have to have the radio because of Marjorie. <laughs> Yeah, that's a fine. Depressing. But Scott from Brookline likes the intellectual conversation. We've got Dean from Amesbury. On Billy our show? From, that's, what, that's what Scott said. Okay. Claire from Andover, Juliana from Rosendale, Isabel uh, from Hollis, Charlene from Lynn. We appreciate all these people who took the, the time. I'm sure you read the one from uh, Laura from Brookline who also said, tell Jen to be nicer to Marjorie. That's, I did. We've read that twice that's kind now, of Marjorie. A, that's kind of a constant twice. theme of the emailers and the texters. They're always saying the same thing. Jim, be nicer to Marjorie. And I'm happy to say or unhappy to say it really hasn't had much effect over these Why are you looking at Andy Borowitz when well, you're saying this? I, I mean, know he's, on my, got I know he's on my side. I okay, know he's on my ahead. side. Always. Anyway, Thank right you. now we have the Elon Crank Radio. I'm exhausted from cranking. I don't Elon know emergency crank, crank emergency radio. Emergency crank radio. Yeah. Here's the sound. Oh, it's Eton, oh, not it's Elon. Eton, not Thank Elon. you, Zoe. Whoops. It is the Eton. <laughs> <laughs> It is the oh Eton. No, it's got nothing God. to do with Twitter or X or Elon Musk. It Whatever. is the Eton. That has more to do with the Marchioness of Chambray, actually. It does, think actually. About it Thank you. The Marchioness e- of Chambray. That's Thank right. you. Okay, let's move Eton on. Eton in Great Britain. That's our gift for today. Oh, uh, Ten bucks. Oh, why don't you say something? I'll give the number. 888-897-9424-GBHnews.org. <laughs> you mean me? Add? I should Go say ahead. something? We only have 20 okay, seconds Okay, fine. Left. I'll speak really quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, 10 bucks a month or $120 all at once. you got a lot of great things. Just heard Cali. You heard those two Two incredible singers, Darlene and Athene, singing beautifully. Andy Barowitz is one of our all-time favorites. A couple of great chefs coming up today. You get a lot of great things here, and if you appreciate it, then call 888-897-9424 or go to gbhnews.org and give what you can. Welcome back to Boston Public Radio, live from the library, streaming at youtube.com slash gbhnews. As we said, Tuesday, 11 and 12, the governor joins us for an hour. And now we're going to introduce the guy who I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> Here's some headlines from our favorite satirist, Andy Barowitz. DeSantis stops spring break parties by showing up at them. <laughs> Katie Britt's kitchen to become exhibit at Smithsonian. You know him from his brilliant newsletter, The Barowitz Report, a longtime fixture at The New Yorker. is now reemerging this week as a substack, just this week, that's quickly garnered 
hate the word garnered, that has quickly, uh, whatever, attracted more than 350,000 wow, subscribers. Wow. His latest book is Profiles in Ignorance, How America's Politicians Got Dumb and Dumber. Andy, it's great to see you. Hi. Thanks for having yeah, me. Congrats. We are thrilled to have you. Congratulations. Yeah. We are absolutely thrilled, thrilled to be here. And we're hoping for your upcoming column on the Marchioness de Chambray because our <laughs> crack staff has just found her castle. Oh, that, my God. Very that, nice. Who knows what could have gone on in that castle. Exactly. But, but how do people find you? Where do people go? They just go to Substack they, and know, what do they do? No, they don't even have to go to Substack. Borowitz Report. Borowitz oh. Report. Borowitzreport.com. You know, you guys were following me back in the old days when it was just, you know, me and my laptop. That's, That's right. true. You know, I was like Hunter Biden. You know, just <laughs> typing away. That's right. Leaving it at the repair shop. Yeah. You know? And uh, I was doing it just myself, you know, at home. And then, like, in 2012, The New Yorker came to me and said, would you, can we absorb you into The New Yorker website? And I was like, sure. But I also thought in the back of my mind, you're not going to hold on to that Borowitz Report domain name because nothing lasts forever. You no, know, nothing. And, 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 you know, nothing. everything, you know, I've been on TV shows that have been canceled. I know you guys have had your journeys we in the media. We have. Our travails. No, and, you don't have to uh, be euphemist. We were canceled. You were canceled. <laughs> station. Well, Thank I'd you. like to canceled. prefer that the station flipped to music. Yeah, we were Jim. canceled. We Go were ahead. Canceled. Exactly. Okay, we were canceled. I mean, when I was starting, I started as a, as a TV writer in Hollywood and writing screenplays, and, and I'd get a call from my agent uh, after I'd handed something in, and they'd say, they've decided to go a different way. Yeah. And it's like, what does that mean? It's a way that does not involve you. That's right. And uh, so, yeah, you can, you know, you can euphemize all you want, but I, I held on to the domain name because I knew that someday this day would come, and it arrived, and now what's so exciting is that unlike the old days when I was working on my laptop, the Substack platform lets you kind of do everything. So there's going to be, I'm going to do a podcast, I'm going to do video, I'm going to do long form. It's going to be a much oh, more... Oh, nice. Yeah, it'll be just a, a really great playground for me. And as I said, like the audience, this is a little counterintuitive, but the audience has gotten bigger since I moved to Substack. We've really? gotten a million views in the last two days, and we weren't approaching that, you know, at the New York. Can I ask so. you a quick question about Substack this? I want great. to make sure that I wasn't scammed. Yes. Marjorie so far has signed up for the free version. Yes. There's a premium version that I You're spent lying. $50 for, I want okay. you to know. I want to make sure, raise your right hand, I'm going to really get something for this or no? You were going to get something. Well, let's do the math. Okay. okay now, you were just asking your, your um, pledgers to give, what, $10 a $10 month? $10 a That's month. That's right. Okay. Well, <laughs> do I have a deal for you? <laughs> what is it, please? Because for $50 a year, if you do the math, that is $4.17 a month. That is correct. It's not a competition, and, my friend. Well, I mean, we can just, we'll put it up. We'll do the different <laughs> options. You, know, you give a tote bag, probably. <laughs> You get no tote bag from me, but what you will be getting is I'll be doing online Q and A's. I'll be doing, you know, there's so many people who've never seen me do a show because they haven't been we able have. to. You have, yeah, yes. we did a show together. It was we did great in Cambridge, Cambridge at yes. the Unitarian we Church. Did. Yes, it was wonderful. The we're Unitarians the were screaming. They, they were there. screaming, and um, it was packed. It was packed. But the you Unitarians. know, I, you know, and there are, there are a lot of regions in the country. Uh, where I've never done a show. I've never done a show in Kentucky, for example, because, mm. I mean, they already have a great comedian, Rand Paul, so there's no need uh, to <laughs> go there. Point. I don't want that kind of competition. <laughs> um, but, but in, you know, the, I'll tell you, this year and every year, I mean, I'm from a red state. I'm from Ohio, which used to be uh, a sort of a purple state. We had one of the most liberal senators in history, Howard Metzenbaum. That's right. I, I know him. That's right. And, uh, you know, we still have a great... Senator um, Sherrod Brown, and we also have this guy named uh, J.D. Vance, which kind of brings down the average a little bit. But um, so in red states, you know, if you're thinking like Wyoming or Montana, you might be reading the Borowitz Report and you're sort of thinking, God, I'd love to see one of his shows, but he hasn't come out there. But now by subscribing, you're going to get to see that. $4.17 a month. Do you know that? Yeah, and I, I guarantee you, as God is my witness, I will earn that $4.17. Oh, that's beautiful. I will give you your money's now, worth. Speaking of the Barrett's report, yes. we uh, spent much time on, I think, one of the most moving presentations maybe ever. <laughs> this was the incredibly powerful, from the kitchen, admittedly, uh, response to the State of the Union from uh, Senator Katie Britt. Here's the most moving portion, at least to us, of, the, of her address. We see you. We hear you. Mm -hmm. And we stand with you. We're not done oh yet. Here God. is my impression of that moment. Here it is. We see you. <laughs> Thank you. 
We that hear wasn't, it's you. Not that good. Jim. We stand yeah. by no. you. Now, you had something to say about her, no? Well, no? well, first of all, hers is so much scarier yeah. than that. It I mean, is, it's like if yeah. you're going to try to do uh, a scary thing. Well, you know, yeah, it was a big news. I've been breaking a lot of news this week. Yes. It's my first week back. But, yes, um, she has really been honored because um, Katie Britt's kitchen, as you pointed out, is being uh, moved to the Smithsonian to become an exhibit. You know, we know that <laughs> Julia Child's um, kitchen is already That's there. That's right. What's distinctive about Katie Britt's well, kitchen, sorry. though, is that she has actually never cooked in that kitchen. <laughs> so it's in mint condition. And um, I think school groups in the future will, will go through and, and their teachers will struggle to explain what happened in that kitchen. It wasn't cooking. It was some kind of a, a car crash. But, um, yeah, no, she, she is great. She's, you know, speaking of the Republicans, you know, you um, mentioned, you teased a little story mm-hmm. while I was waiting to come on. And, yeah. you know, as a newsman, I'm always trying to stay on top of breaking news. Of course. So Marjorie Taylor Greene has, in fact, said that she's going to move to vacate the chair. Yeah. And Mike Johnson has already pushed back. Um, he said, as long as I'm speaker, the chair is already vacant. So, um, so it's going to be... a powerful it's gonna, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's going to be... An, you know, that's the funny thing is, like, people are always, like, freaking out about the House Republicans. I don't think we really need to worry because none of them can get along. I mean, they're just... They're, it's like Fleetwood Mac or something. They're always like... But even so, like, um, Marjorie Taylor Greene can't stand Lauren Boebert. I mean, they, right. they scream at each other. That's right. They scream. So the idea that there's this axis of the morons that's going to be, it's like, no, they all, they all hate each other. So it's the only position of theirs I really endorse. Yeah, axis of the morons. What's the title of your latest book? <laughs> Profiles in Ignorance, yes. Yeah. A, little, a little sort of a brand, like a little brand yeah. mention there. That's it does good. make you a little bit nervous. You know, I don't know, speaking of being a newsman, did you follow this story about the uh, woman that's, I guess they elect superintendents down in North Carolina? They do, yeah. Mm-hmm. This woman uh, who uh, supported the public assassination of Barack Obama and uh, is, would be ready to kill Joe Biden and thinks that people are drinking the blood of children in New York City. I mean, is that, is that a problem to be the superintendent when you're worried about people drinking the blood of Q- QAnon kind of stuff? That's, you know I mean? That is a problem. We know it's funny. This is hitting a little close to home because I now live in New Hampshire. That's and, um, correct. We have kind of a crazy legislature down, down there in New Hampshire. This is actually, this is what makes my job tough because this sounds like a Borowitz report, but actually is a true thing, which is the Republicans in the House um, down in Concord just passed this bill that's going to move up to the Senate to legalize brass knuckles because that, that has been one aspect of our life in New Hampshire <laughs> that's that has been woefully missing. We have not had, and I want to, you know, and there are a lot of people who want to, you know, brass knuckle control. You know, you libs, you want to control brass knuckles. But I got to tell you something, brass knuckles do not punch you in the face. People do. That's, that's right. Okay. That's that right. Exactly. Absolutely. I think the idea that like you move to New Hampshire because you don't want to pay taxes but you will get your face messed up. <laughs> and that's just the price that you pay. Nah, I'll take it. To save on taxes, I'll take it. Absolutely. By the way, nobody believes you really do live in New Hampshire. I do. I drove down today. That's unbelievable. Yeah. I drove, I drove you don't down. seem like a New Hampshire kind of guy. Well, you, you know, know, New Hampshire, I mean? you know, they're, they're weird stereotypes. Like, I live in Hanover, which is, I think, that's kind, of, right. it's kind of a liberal Ooh. bubble. Mm-hmm. I've exclusively lived in liberal bubbles everywhere I've gone. I lived in West L.A. I lived in the Upper West Side of New York. I went to college in Cambridge. Matt, yes. you're familiar we've of, with we've that heard place. Of the college, yes. That's right. So, I mean, I just, I like to move around in that very comforting cocoon. But um, I'm actually, you know, it's funny. You mentioned the book. In the last chapter of the book, I talk about becoming involved in your community and, you and all that. And unfortunately, the people in Hanover read my book. <laughs> so they came after me and they said, would you join the board of our library? And you did. Uh, and I did. And I'm actually hosting, now I'm a little plug, I'm hosting a benefit there. If anyone feels like making the two-hour drive up to Hanover. And, Hanover, New Hampshire. and you're going to get to, it's a party on uh, April 20th. And it's like, I got nominated for the board and I was sure I wouldn't get elected. I think like, because when they, when they get a sense of my personality, you know, it's like Ron DeSantis, you know, just immediately no one will vote. But I was, I, unfortunately, they elected people by um, acclamation. By the way, so. the admission for the event is only $4.17. That's right. <laughs> which That's is really right. incredible. It's That's actually, right. it's actually pricier, but it's for a really good cause because you know what you were saying about that superintendent, you know, if I can wax seriously for a minute. You know, we're in this in this era now where people are trying to ban books and take I books know. out of libraries. So libraries are actually 
at the you know front line of our democracies. That's the one serious thing. You know thing we're I'll in say. a library. You know that. Yeah. I'm aware. Okay, I we just are in the front lines. Just pandering right as here. usual. <laughs> okay, pandering. we're talking with satirist Andy Borowitz who's going to stick around through a quick pledge break. You are listening. Pledge, oh, pledge, pledge, pledge break. You're listening to Boston Public Radio 89.7 GBH. We are indeed Brosting. Broadcasting. I'm having a tough time today. Oh, wait we a second. Is, is Rit Momney in the audience? Ah. No, that's not him. He just looks a lot like him. I'm sorry. We are broadcasting we from are. the front lines here at the Boston Public Whatever. Library. We're streaming at youtube.com slash GBH News. We'll be right back. Boston Public Radio. Live local conversations every day. Brought to you by listener support. Now it's your turn to keep the conversation going with an ongoing contribution in any amount. Please sign up as a sustaining member during our spring membership drive. Call 888-897-9424 or give online at gbhnews.org. Okay, I want to thank Donna from Salem who says she's one of the listeners that has contributed. We read their comments, Andy, because they take the time to yeah. donate, so we want to read their comments. What they say? Hearing normal reporters and journalists in these scary times relaxes me and gives me hope, which reminds me of a voter that went in to vote a couple of weeks ago. Remember he was voting, and they asked him why he was voting for the Democrat that was running, and he said because he liked normal. Mm. Uh, to bring back normal. Interesting. Mm. Teresa from Beverly says, I'm grateful for high-quality independent journalism, which is hard to find these days. We want to thank also Lois from Marblehead, Sandra from Lowell, Juliana from Rosendale, and all the people that took the time to donate here because more than 70% of our money comes from people like you who are generous enough to donate during these pledge drives, which we do occasionally because this is free. GBH is free, and we need the money to support it. the station, and very little, about 4 or 5% of our money comes from the government. The rest comes from listener support and from very generous, uh, those big foundation kind of things. So the number is 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. If you would like to take this opportunity to donate for 10 bucks, you can get the Eton Emergency Crank Radio, which is something that you can operate in, you know, disasters. Hurricanes. You know my contract kind of says I'm allowed to talk during the pledge breaks too. Are you Go ahead. That? Oh, I'm sorry. You're 14 short seconds. One. Short one. Why don't you give the number? 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. And Nancy from Shrewsbury said the most important point. What you say? I've been waiting for three days to do the donation so I can get the crank radio. There you go. There you go. Okay. Welcome back. We're not back. This is where they play music. Uh, okay. Okay. We'll talk about the Elon Tank Radio again in a couple of minutes, but first we're talking about brilliant satirists. Do you like when people say they're brilliant? You do. You love it. Well, I, I don't hear it enough. Like so, you're John, I mean, brilliant I, satirist. I'd like to get used to that. He is our favorite satirist, by the way. Uh, that would be Andy Barwitz. Go to barwitzreport.com. Com. And you subscribe. You get it for free. But if you really want all the extra stuff he's talking about, which he allegedly is going to provide, you do the $4.17, which is $50 a year. You know, I knew. I thought I knew everything about you. You're over there at Harvard. You're the, running the, uh, the Lampoon over mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know about French Fresh Prince of Bel Air. That's right. So you've been to my Wikipedia page. <laughs> well, drilling, down. Yeah, right. drilling, drilling down. That's right. Drilling down. That's yeah, right. No, Did a lot I, of research here. Yeah, I, I created that show in 1990. That's going back a few years. Yeah. So did you make but, huge um, money doing that? I mean, is that huge money? It's um, you know, it it's it's funny. It's a very t you know TV and Hollywood. It is very lucrative. But actually, for me, it opened the door to like making no money, which is what you do <laughs> when you're like writing prose humor, you know, yeah. so I, you know, it did, you know, I, it was very successful and I got to think about like, well, what do I really like to do? And what I really like to do is I like to perform and I like to write alone in a room. The thing about writing for TV is like you're, it's almost like advertising. You're in a room with six people just shouting out jokes and stuff and some great stuff comes out of that. But I had a really old-fashioned idea about what writing is. And to me, writing is still like just being alone yeah. in a room and, and just you know, wrestling with your thoughts. And it's a lot of fun for me. But yeah, it was a whole different... I spent the first 15 years of my life as a TV writer in L.A. So it was a completely different chapter. So, well, oh, sorry, go Just on The Fresh Prince, so did you get to meet the star, Will Smith? Did I get to meet what him? What are you talking about? If, what do you think he's doing? You know, if I if I hadn't met him, it would have made producing that show so complicated. Yeah. Because I would have everything would have gone through an intermediary. No, I mean I. I didn't know. I didn't I, know how they do it. I no, didn't know I, this like from afar. Can I no. interrupt a second, what? Jamie? Have no. you ever met Jim Browdy and Marjorie Egan, or have you not been lucky? In, okay, yeah. good. I'm sorry. All right, well, I'll tell you when he. Okay. The the way that show came together was that 
Quincy Jones um, had, you know, he knew Will as a rapper, and Will's rap career at that point was very much in decline because he had been kind of a teeny bopper rapper and kids had already moved on to harder stuff. Yeah. And they found him kind of passe. And so like everybody whose career is in trouble, you do a sitcom. <laughs> that's what he, and so that's how he wound up in my, you know, in my sphere. And so he had never acted before. And uh, so we, you know, it was the excitement of working with a kid who was just tremendously talented, but had never done this and just watching him kind of explode. And it was so cool. So yeah, I have met him. Did you meet Peggy uh, Lipton? That's what really matters. I actually have met Peggy Lipton. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. He's still my heart. Yeah. I, uh, now you see, when somebody asks you if you met somebody, that's not name dropping, right? That's just me no, it's answering name asking. question. That's me answering. Yeah. I mean, because they were, yeah, they were married and like they were still, uh, Quincy and Peggy Lipton, when I met them, seemed to be on very good terms. That's and, good. And now, can I tell you, I don't care yeah. a damn about the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I want to talk okay. about it now. If I'm, I don't. Smith I know you do. Okay, man. fine. Now, you are, even though you're a satirist, I've always found you to be a relatively fair person. Is that a, are you comfortable with that or not? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that I think that fair, I mean, I think that that's what I'm known for is fairness. My fairness. Fairness, um, yes, I think so. Yes. So do you feel it's unfair for the evil government of your former state of New York to take all this property away from the former and probably next president of the United States? Oh, you mean the, the confiscate, you know, all yeah. the... Um, gosh, I don't, I, you know, I don't know. Like, I feel, I feel like it, it actually would be a great growth experience for Donald Trump you because do. he's, sev he's 77 years old, and this would be the first time in his life he actually paid a bill. <laughs> So, I mean, I think that in a way, New York is doing him a tremendous favor by introducing yeah. him to this thing that we do all the time, you know? So, um, I, no, I mean, I, I do believe that uh, it's, it's, it's high time. The question is, who wants those crappy buildings? That's what I just want to know. Oh, was I allowed to say that? I hope you so. can, I think, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but that's, I mean, there are people who live in the Trump buildings who want to rem remove the name Trump because it's bringing down their it's property true. value. It really it does. Is true. On it's the West incredible. Side Highway, so, right? They did take all the Trump signs down. So, I mean, you have to find a buyer for those buildings who has never heard of Donald Trump. And that is a lucky individual. <laughs> I've got to say, if you can find that person. Uh, Did you ever but, meet him in New York when you were there speaking of meat? I, no, I never met, I have never met any of the Trumps. I, his wife, Mercedes, I've never <laughs> met her. That's what um, he calls her for those who missed that, I, I guess. I think he has only fleetingly met her based on the fact that he doesn't seem to have remembered her name. But no, I've never met, uh, never met any of the Trumps. I, uh, I was at a benefit once with... Um, RFK Jr. that he was hosting really? there. I, I, so I did, uh, I did sort of meet him. He was there. Um, it was a benefit for something uh, for the planet. Not our planet, the planet he's from. Yes, um, it okay. Was, it was something, I can't remember which planet. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but I, I, you know, I, I haven't met, you know, it's funny. I, I, met, um, I met Barack Obama once. I went to a, so I met him. I have not really met. Called our show. I have. Did he call your show? Called our show. What did he say? He it was the final appearance of Governor Deval Patrick, who's a good buddy of his, and it was a surprise call. And when Obama, we put Obama on the line, Governor Patrick did not believe well, that it, he thought it was an impersonator he at says the beginning. It was Barry from Somerville. He did. Yeah. Oh That's what my he God! Said. Get on the phone All right, Barry I'll tell you. Somerville. I'll tell you the one president who I did meet after he was in office w w was Bill Clinton. And I'll really, I'll, I'll tell you the story. I was at a benefit, it was to raise money after 9-11. So it was mm -hmm. like downtown in Tribeca and they were trying to encourage people to, you know, get back to, you know, build businesses down there. And um, it was a very small democratic uh, benefit. Um, full disclosure, I am a Democrat. I had to just put it <laughs> out there. I would never have guessed, Just no. in the interest of disclosure. Yeah. So I was actually, the guy who was running the benefit was doing me a real favor because he had me seated next to where Hillary was going to sit. Ooh. And this was when Hillary was still in the United States Senate. And um, so her chair, much like Mike Johnson's, was vacant <laughs> for, because she actually had to, be, she had to be in Washington to do a vote. And so I was sitting there at, in, next to an empty chair for a, you know, about half an hour of the, of the dinner, which was kind of um, you know, not really an honor. But then President Clinton, who was also the benefit and spoke, was like table hopping and he sat down right next to me. Oh my goodness. And then what, what happened was um, this guy got up to entertain and he was doing these kind of Sinatra covers, you know, it was sort of like a, but he wasn't even covering Sinatra, it's more like he was covering Harry Connick Jr. Oh, covering Sinatra. Oh. And it was like, you know, so it was like, you know, I did in my way and, and doing all these Sinatra covers. And Bill Clinton leans over to me um, about, after about 20 minutes of this guy singing and he says, he reminds me kind of a Frank Sinatra. <laughs> and it's like, hmm. 
sharp. And then we're, then we're listening. So our date really starts taking off at that point. And then I started noticing, I'm listening to this guy singing, and I notice this hand sort of rubbing up and down my thigh. What? And I turn, it is Bill Clinton. <laughs> and he's like caressing me. And I realized, like, he's just kind of this omnivore. Touchy you know? guy? Yeah, he's a touchy, touchy guy. guy. I mean, it just doesn't matter who, doesn't yeah. matter what your persuasion is. Um, Remember the handshake story? And the anonymous book, Reaching Up the Arm. Go of up, the, yeah, you start oh, yeah. down here. Before you know it, he's up in the nether regions there. Oh, kind yeah. Of there was, um, it, I, I wouldn't say it was an actual grope, but it was getting there. <laughs> and uh, no, so he was just like, just sort of crispy. He's just that, he, that's who he is. He's just that guy. But he that's can't the only, help himself. That's the only uh, president I Speaking really Speaking of that, do you want to tell us about when you went to the movie theater with Lauren Boebert? Go ahead. <laughs> no, you, don't, you don't want to share that? It's fine. You know what? I'd rather go with Bill Clinton, I think. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I have to, if that's the choice I have to make. Can I we think. mention one more New Yorker who we are sort of obsessed with? Sure. One of your last uh, posts when you were with the New Yorker, the title of which I wrote down was George Santos to spend more time with imaginary family. <laughs> yeah. So, so and, what's he up to now? He's running Going again. He well, he's running again. That's, that's for another. For not. Oh, okay. an, you don't know this. Well, no, because it's funny. Inter it's interesting. That goes against everything I thought he was going to do. Because I thought he was going to, you know reunite with his fellow Beatles and uh, <laughs> the fact that, that he's now going back to yeah. why so he, what, what seat is he running how the hell for? do I know this, is good, news, this is good news for me though, I should say so he's back in the news thank yeah. you George Santos I know it's very good he's back in the news why are you know before you leave one of the things you're going to do I read about your new deal and all the things you are going to do which is actually really exciting you know we're thank huge you. fans of yours you sound like you're podcast averse why, why, why is that I just, you know, it's funny, like, I just feel, um, for years people have saying, oh, you've got to do a podcast, and it's, it's sort of like, unlike Brass Knuckles, I don't think there's been a crying need for another podcast. I can see the need for Brass Knuckles. Absolutely. Um, but I just sort of felt like, oh, God, another podcast. Another podcast. And what I wouldn't do, I would not do a regular, I think podcast people who do podcasts think that they're better at podcasts than they are in general. In general, I think they think that they're like scintillating and mm -hmm. they have interesting things to say. And a lot of times, they actually know they just like to hear the sound of their voice, which is a problem. I can relate to that. Yeah, and I can too. So I'm trying to put a lid on it a little bit. I think for um, at BorowitzReport.com, I'm going to do podcasts, but not like every week or every day. Not make it relentless. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, I'll, I'll do it when something interesting happens. Like for example, this summer we're going to have. You know, two political conventions. We are and, heard, and yeah. so that yeah, would be that'd right. be worth having some guests on to talk about that. But I'm not going to do it just to hear myself to hear myself talk. Now I want to. We have a uh, letter from or a text from one of your former colleagues, Robin from Burlington, who says, "I worked for one of Andy Borowitz's first LA agents, Lee Cohen at William oh, Morris. Oh yeah, Andy was a sweetheart then. He's a sweetheart oh, now. Please. Glad he's doing what he's doing. The world of political humor needs more." Uh, in more than movies. Oh, so wow. Hello to Robin. Yeah, Lee Cohen was like, he was my agent when I was 23. And uh, You have no man. idea who Robin is, correct? No, I do remember You Robin. really do? I do okay. remember Robin. She's and, in Burlington now. Yeah. I used to, you know, I used to hang out at the William Morris office. That was, you know, that was sort of like my little clubhouse for a while there. Okay, so tell us again, if we're looking for Andy Borowitz, where do we find him? You go to borowitzreport.com. You can subscribe for free. You will get not like the deal that was at the New Yorker where you would get like the headline and a link. You will get the entire story delivered to your inbox, email inbox, two to three times a week. And then if you want more things like other pieces, subscriber-only content, online Q&As, um, performances, podcasts. Thank you. Um, you pay your $4.17 a month if you do the yearly plan. Thank you, I have. Or $5 a month if you just want to try it for a month. But you know, one thing I, I, I would say is that I feel like, and I, in all seriousness, we have kind of a similar business model. We do, we do. It's like supported by the people who want our content. And I think that's cool. In a way, it's like, it's nice to be able to communicate directly with your readers or listeners and have them support you. So. Andy, we love you, as you know, and we are Thank thrilled you. that you're back you posting. Too. We can't uh, tell you how happy we are. The great Andy Barwitz. And thanks Barwitz everyone who came out. Dot com. We have been speaking Mwah. with satirist Andy Barwitz, whose beloved Barwitz Report is back to keep up to date on his latest, the website again, BarwitzReport.com. His latest book this is a great title, Profiles in Ignorance, How America's Politicians Got Dumb and Dumber. Thank you so much, Andy Borowitz. Thank you so much. After a quick break, we've talked with two Boston chefs, Michael Scalfo from Josephine and Alden and Harlow and Brian Moy 
from Sojo and China Pearl. You're listening to Boston Public Radio 89.7 GBH, broadcasting live from the Boston Public Library and streaming at youtube.com slash GBH News. It's Boston Public Radio on GBH 89.7. You know, most of the money we spend to bring you this program comes from listener support. We're here asking you to take a few minutes right now, make a contribution during our spring membership drive. Please consider signing up as a monthly sustaining member over at GBHnews.org or call us at 888-897-9424. A good afternoon to you. I'm Mark Cohen, joined in the studio by Liz Lavoy. All right, here's the deal. We have 15 contributions to go in the next about two minutes to stay on track this hour. The success of this membership drive depends on all of us joining together. That's how we keep GBH on the air. Please help pay for the news by making your contribution right now. GBHnews.org or call 888-897-9424. And you have just about another hour left to get in on the E-Town Emergency Radio. We've been talking about it all morning. $10 a month on our sustainer plan will get you the Swiss Army Knife of radios. Such a great tool to have in your house in case the light goes out. Also great to have in your car. Maybe you're going hiking, camping, boating. Take it with you wherever you go. It's a great little device uh, that provides such great uh, comfort in case uh, the power goes out. $10 a month or a one-time gift of $120. Again, it goes away at 2 o'clock, so time running out. Give us a call at 888-897-9424. We got a picture of it for if you want to check it out over at gbhnews.org. Are you relaying the stories and conversations you heard on Boston Boston Public Radio all day long to your families and family and colleagues? How about stealing a moment to read up on an important local issue on your GBH app? If you feel a strong connection with NPR and GBH, now is the time to give. We hope all of those connections, conversations, and education you get from GBH are worthy of your financial support. Give online at gbhnews.org or give us a call at 888-897-9424. All right, down to 13 contributions we're looking for. 13 contributions in the final couple of minutes here this hour. Please do your part. We're just taking a little time out from Jim and Marjorie to ask for your support. All contributions mean so much to keeping the lights on and programming like this available to you uh, each and every day. Uh, 13 more contributions. 888 888- 897-9424-GBHnews.org. Thank you to all of those who are helping us knock down that goal. Thank you to Tim in Harvard who says Jim and Marjorie make him laugh. That's why he gives. No matter what your reason for giving. We hope that you can join Tim and help us knock down that goal at gbhnews.org or give us a call at 888-897-9424. And GBH is commercial free and listener supported. Of course, that means we're here because you want us here. This fund drive is an important reminder to do your part, make a contribution to radio that you not only listen to, but radio that you believe in. Online, you can show your support. Look for the donate button at gbhnews.org or call us at 888-897-9424. And when you support that radio you believe in, you can also pick up the Eton Emergency Radio today. Give $10 a month or make a one-time gift of $120, and you can receive the Eton Rechargeable Radio that gets both AM, FM, and the National Weather Service channels. All of that, $10 a month, but you only have until 2 p.m. today, and then it's gone for the rest of the drive. GBHnews.org or call 888-897-9424. want to send a couple of thanks out to Allison in Dover, Dorothy in East Weymouth and also Harriet in Waltham. Thank you so much. You are the newest member to the GBH family. Thank you for your contributions. Please join with these friends of ours with your support right now, helping us lower our goal now down to six more contributions in the next couple of minutes. Thank you in advance. Take those couple of minutes now, please, at 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. Today, we're encouraging you to join GBH as a sustaining member. It's the best way to support your listening. You choose a monthly amount to give, five, ten, dollars a month and it's automatically deducted from your bank account or credit card it's affordable because you pay a little bit each month and that monthly contribution adds up to significant support gbhnews.org or call 888-897-9424 all right i also want to send a thanks out to carla in southborough writing to us uh, her reason for giving the news and information as well as jim and marjorie the culture show wait wait don't tell me thank you so much let's hear from you next at 888-897-9424 gb bhnews.org. I'm Hannah Loss, BPR producer, and you and I are listening to 89.7 WGBH HD1 Boston online at gbhnews.org.
GBH News with NPR. What matters to you? Welcome back to Boston Public Radio. Marjorie Egan and Jim Browder. We're live at the Boston Public Library, streaming at youtube.com slash GBH News. Tuesday, we're back at the library. The governor, Maura Healy, joins us for an hour from 11 to 12 right here for Ask the Governor. We're joined now by two restaurateurs and close friends, we're told, contributing the food and recipes of their youth to Boston's vibrant food scene. Michael Scalfo runs Somerville's Josephine's on the ground floor of the Cambria Hotel. Did I say in Somerville? I did. In addition to Cambridge is Olden and Harlow, Waypoint and Longfellow. Brian Moy, meanwhile, is the man behind the great shoujo in both Chinatown and now Central Square, as well as the fabulous China Pearl a fixture of Chinatown set to reopen in the summer of 2024, and the place in Quincy, by the way, where we were for the 90th birthday of the legendary and wonderful Helen Chin. That's right. Michael, Brian, great to have you here. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thank Thank you you. very much for coming in. Well, I was saying to Brian before, I spent a lot of time eating dim sum down at the China Pearl, but it is you closed right before the pandemic for renovation. So what's happening? Uh, It's been a long time coming, and uh, we're set for this summer. And reopening, it's going to be same business where we do dim sum brunch uh, seven days a week. We'll have banquets, functions, events, dinner business, classic dishes, some new modern elevated items as well. And uh, it's a beautiful brand new space, floor to ceiling and great windows and natural light coming in. Oh, great windows and natural light. We love great windows. Before we leave you, you know, there probably are three people listening who don't know what dim sum is. So tell people what it is. Dim sum um, in Chinese is uh, little translation is touch of the heart and a uh, lot of dumplings, a lot of push cards. Love the push cards, by the way. Love the push cards. You know, nowadays, uh, res- dim sum restaurants are doing less and less of that. They're doing like sort of menu ordering, uh, but we're going to keep the classic style and feel alive with the steam cards. A lot of dumplings. I always related to uh, small plates, top of style, three, four pieces. So. You bring some friends and family, and you get a lot of different bites that you get to have. So I think it's a a year anniversary of Shoujo in Central Square, and it's a year anniversary of Josephine's, right, in Somerville. Yeah, we were actually just talking about it, uh, I think, around April 20th. Yeah, was exactly. Are you really friends, or is this a fiction for the show? We've been friends. (laughs) friends Are you really friends? Yeah, over 10 years. How do you know each other? Well... My wife, Ellen, who's out there somewhere, and I, when we first moved Where's to Boston, Ellen? I don't know if she, she was Whatever. parking the car, so well, I wouldn't hello, be Ellen, late. Wherever you are. Yeah, wherever she's at. Okay. Um, China Pearl, we were big dim sum fanatics yeah, we moving up too. from New, New York, so we would go, and then I got my family hooked on it, and I never knew Brian owned it. We just would, we were regulars there pretty much every Sunday, and then we had a mutual friend who worked at the Gallows in the South End, if you know that restaurant, yeah. uh, which is unfortunately not around anymore, but connected us, and we've just been fast friends ever since. So tell us about your new deal, Yeah. by the way. Josephine. That is correct. Yeah, so Josephine is, um, like you just said, a year old, and it's Italian-American. It's kind of a love letter to the food I grew up on. It's not a concept that I ever thought I would do as a chef, but coming out of the pandemic and resetting in a lot of different ways, having to reopen three restaurants from scratch and reopen our restaurants all over the place kind of changed, I think, what was important. So I decided to visit the the food that I grew up on and kind of put my own unique spin a little bit on that. Sicilian grandparents. Yeah. So tell people about the northern southern Italian food kind of deal. So Joe and Joe, Joseph and Josephine, they came through Sicily to Ellis Island um, and settled in, first in Connecticut. They were stonemasons by trade when they moved over and then settled in Brooklyn. And then um, that's where I was born, just outside of Brooklyn in Long Island and grew up there. Um, and they were, you know, the true matriarch, patriarch of our family. They were kind of the, the bedrocks of everything that I knew growing up from family. And our meals were, as you can imagine, the stereotypical Italian meals, like breakfast on a weekday was like a production, right? (laughs) So um, it was fun to kind of revisit that in the restaurant setting. And, you know, as a young chef, I think like wanting to do my own thing or get away from that, you know, to come back to it and visit it and kind of give it a little bit of my own TLC and my own perspective a little bit on it. That's been a real treat. You know, Brian, almost every restaurateur, there's some exceptions we have here, are talking about, you know, we just got through the pandemic. It's still tough. It's really hard to get workers. We're just trying to survive with what we have. You both expanded. So what was the mindset? Were you not worried about the environment Mm -hmm. in which you were adding a restaurant? This is Central Central Square restaurant, yeah. Um, It was definitely not easy 
to say the least. Uh, but the shoujo in Central Square, uh, that actually started right before the pandemic. Uh-huh. Uh, we signed our lease the day before Governor Baker shut down Is the state true? of Massachusetts. Oh, my God. And, um, good, good move. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, you know, that day I remember the legal office. We were discussing internally, uh, my partners, about, you know, New York had to shut down. So are we really confident of what's going to happen with uh, the uncertainty of the world? Conversation really led to, do we believe in Central Square? Yeah. Do we believe in this neighborhood? And does it make a difference if it's today, tomorrow, 10 years? Yeah. So we all agreed that, no, we've been looking at Central Square for a long time. I started wanting to go into Cambridge. Uh, Shoujo opened in 2012. I think 2013, we were already looking at Central Square. Um, so we decided it's a good move. It's a good location. Um, and Landlord was really great during pandemic. We kept in touch. Obviously, work could not start. Um, and it led us into a long delay to get opened. Yeah. But we're there. It's a great fixture. Um, the Middle East, cheap records. You know, it's great where spots. I spent so many. Like we were, we used to yeah. go record diving there. You know, Together? so yeah. <laughs> so, but, but my story is a little different. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I mean, I signed mine of February during the year after the pandemic. So we actually negotiated it through the pandemic. So, so you're not either incre- incredible stupidity, really? or just, but also an incredible <laughs> leap, leap of faith, maybe, you know, it was, you know, the timing in some weird ways was more conducive to making a good deal, Yeah, you know, because no one knew what, we Was were all, both happen. sides were kind of just acting on faith a little bit, and and in, in hindsight now, really glad we did it, because I love the corridor and the neighborhood we're in, and how it's changing in really positive ways, and to be a part of that. But yeah, I mean, we did it in the while everything was shut down. So that was a strange feeling to, to sign a lease. Before down. we continue, can we eat something? Yeah, I mean, please. Yeah. what did what, what yeah. you bring? We introduced them while we're getting okay. something. We're talking to Michael Skelfo, who, yeah. runs, uh, who runs Somerville's the Josephine yeah. on the ground floor of the Cambria Hotel. In addition to Cambridge's Alden and Harlow, Waypoint, and Longfellow, we're also talking to Brian Moy, the man behind the great Sojo in both Chinatown and Central Square. And the China Pearl nice. in Chinatown has been there for years and years, and it's going to reopen in its truly renovated state in June, I think. Is, that, is it June still? You know, it's been a long time coming, so we're yeah. not putting any target dates, but... Okay. Um, Just open the damn thing. I mean, really. I mean, there are a lot of people who it's part yeah, of their I history mean, I in ask Boston. him on a weekly basis. My yeah. kids are Chinese-American. When yeah. they were little kids and they came here, like, I think maybe the first restaurant we ever took them to yeah. was China Pro. So I'm like, so what, what, hand Marjorie pieces yes. pizza, okay. Michael. What yeah. is okay. the pizza? Thank you very much. What is it? So this one is... Um, the sausage, vodka sauce, so it's a vodka sauce Ooh. with house-made sausage, um, a little mozzarella cheese, and basil to finish it. So it's one of the more popular ones. We this have, looks gorgeous. We, the thing that's, that's really unique good. about Josephine is we do thin crust, so we do kind of, uh, mm. I like most people, I'm very, very particular about my pizza, so I like New York, obviously, but I also like um, characteristics, I would say, of Neapolitan-style pizza. I don't like the soft floppiness of the Neapolitan. I like the sturdiness of New York. So our thin crust kind of straddles both of those, and then we do a deep dish as well, too. Um, and then we have, you know, some salads, some steaks. You've, you've, you've eaten pasta. there, you've eaten eaten there, there a few times. times. Yeah, what are you yeah. talking about? Yeah, yeah. You have a, a huge yeah, we, array we, yeah. of great times. Thank you. So what do you yeah. bring with you, Brian? Uh, my food is actually still en route. Oh, but oh that's give, you. You want, you want to give gladly, them my dessert? I would oh, gladly talk desserts? about Michael's dessert. Though. Yeah, talk about his desserts if what you is would. This, Brian? What is it? This has a pistachio <laughs> crust on top. <laughs> and this a nice is really happening here. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll let Michael Ol- uh, yeah, <laughs> olive oil cake with blood orange and oh, pistachio. Oh, olive oil cake. Oh, it sounds like okay. you want, whoa, whoa, you want whoa, that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, it takes right over okay, here, Jim. What's this one? And this one is um, torta caprese, which is like a flourless chocolate cake. Oh, I love that. You so it's a-, a lot of almond meal and almond flour to start the cake, and then it's got a little amaro syrup, and then we brought some whipped cream for it, too. Mm. So, Michael, I have to, oh. it, it, we read about you losing 100 pounds, which is unbelievable. I'm yeah. looking at your very thick guy there. Yeah. Wait, we have photographs and, from his Instagram page. Yeah, we're going to put the... Do you mind if we do this? shirt on? Do you mind? Yeah, with no shirt. The thing oh, wow. is, okay. Why well, is a shirt? Oh Jesus. my goodness! I know that, oh my guys. goodness! Yeah. La 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 la! Look at yeah. you there on the also right. You're like that Ryan Gosling and Ken. <laughs> I wouldn't Very go that good. far. He looks good. And that's like the <laughs> ultimate grant. No, no, on the left there. That's but here's the thing. Yeah. I mean, you're around pizza, pasta, all this. Hor- horrible all, decision. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So you got all my favorite things. Exercise you know. a lot of. Yeah. Um, how, how'd you do it? Uh, well, I did it with the good folks at Brigham, and I got in there. Uh, Ellen and I had gotten back from a trip in Italy at the end of 2020, and I was 
that was that trip, actually, you could see on the left in that picture, and I was not in great shape, and there's a, unfortunately, a long history of heart disease, and mm. heart attacks, unfortunately, are what tend to take us out in my family, and um, so I came back, and uh, the cardiology appointment was already on the books, and I went in, and I was 48 at the time, and he said, you know, what do you want to do here? What, you have a decision to make, you know? And uh, I said, well, obviously, I want to get to work here. So I, went, I met with the nutrition team over at Brigham. And really, it was without medication. It was purely counting calories and wow. going a little bit more Mediterranean, very high protein focus on the diet. And then um, I'm not a big exerciser. I never was. I'm on my feet, obviously, because of our work a lot. We both are. But um, so it was really just counting calories, minimizing portions. Um, and the weight wanted to come off me, so you know I just stuck with it. You were 48 when you did it. He's 32 now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. when you guys yeah. uh, do this dinner thing that you do together, I'm always skeptical, but that's what you say. What do you eat? Oh, what our, do you eat? Our family meals. Yeah, your family. What do you do? Oh, what, yeah. what kind of food do you eat? Well, we mix it up. It's usually something international. The last time we went out, we went to was it the one where we went in Dorchester? Ah, uh, yes, we went to Dorchester uh, for 2000. Yeah. We had the uh, fried catfish Vietnamese cuisine, oh, traditional. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think we did seven course beef as well as the cafe. We always overdo. We it always overdo. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but there's seven or eight of us, so we, we the food gets gets eaten. You know, and back to you. Uh, if the food were here from one of your wonderful places, I assume one of the things might be dumplings. We read a story about you that I, I hope is true. You were a little kid, and you're working at China Pearl, right? Your father bought it, right? We worked there, and then he bought it, right? He did. So uh, his uh, first week in. Of the United States was in Boston. He actually uh, got a job at China Pearl as a busboy uh, within his first week. And um, '86, uh, him, his partners, my family, they bought it, and I essentially grew up in the industry there. So there is a, a report that when you were a little kid and you were helping out there, that family members of yours could tell how many dumplings you would eat, <laughs> not by counting them in advance, by some other method. What, what was the method? Uh, you know, growing up in the restaurants, um, you know, our dinners would be there, our family celebrations, and I loved peaking raviolis. And, um, you know, I would eat four, five, six of them. Whatever was on the plate that was given to me, I would finish. And I'd always you. go into the kitchen, thank my aunts and uncles, and they would feel around my belly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my nickname growing up was, uh, you know, a little translation was uh, Fat Boy. Mm. So oh, I, was a, I was a chubby kid. And they would reach around and they would say, it looks like, it feels like you <laughs> ate five today. <laughs> and I was mind blown. Oh, I was God. like, is that, really, is that a true story? It's a true story. I love and, the story. And, and I used to always imagine, and I walked back out of the kitchen. I'm like, mom, they knew exactly how many I ate. And I couldn't oh fathom how they did it. Now, at my age, I understand that they cooked it for me. <laughs> oh. By the way, you know what That's Michael doesn't sad. want us to tell? When I first went to Josephine, I felt Michael's stomach and realized he had had three slices of pizza. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, that's what's yeah. that was, yeah. It was really moving yeah. for you, both of us. You know what I want to ask though, that in both of you, because the restaurant business has really changed post-pandemic. Yeah. And, and tell us about that, you know, be the before and after in terms yeah. of what it's like. Um, it's not uh, easy. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's not easy. We, you know, restaurant business, everybody knows, have always operated on the thinnest of margins. Yes. And now it's even more so. I mean, the inflation thing is real as it relates to our sector of the business world and cost of goods. Um, labor is diminished and also uh, just, you know, rightfully more expensive. Um, so you've got to be a little bit more competitive in that department. Um, I think third-party delivery services have really hurt the business yes. uh, and driven prices up in a lot of ways because we have to offset the sometimes 30% loss automatically that those delivery services take. Which is so, so outrageous, 30%. Mm -hmm. What am I missing? Um, it's definitely transformed. Uh, like Catering has increased during yeah. the pandemic. So um, you know, offices, weekdays have been trying to get employees back, which has increased catering business, which is great. Uh, but it's definitely been a slower growth, the trickle-down effect of rising cost of living, uh, insurance, um, rent, labor, you know, everything is starting to really trickle down. But uh, positive is, you know, a lot of the quality of life, you know, has come to a forefront. Um, you know, the gone are the days of 14, 16-hour workdays in the yeah. restaurant is... Um, I think we both grew up in that oh, type yeah. of world oh, yeah, where absolutely. six day a week, 16 hour days is, is part of what you sign up for. Yeah. Uh, 40 hour weeks is just like, 
mind blowing to me, you know. But I think it's safe to say it's made us both better at our jobs, you know, because we had to survive that, we had to navigate that, and now there's less of of it from a um, from a revenue perspective for us to work with. So we have to be better business people to kind of make the margins work. Are you work. nervous? Mm-hmm. More nervous than you were four I, years ago? I'm, I'm nervous by nature, but I think I'm confident also in, in, in what we do in particular. You know, I know that the product is good. I know that we give great hospitality. We have great teams. Um, and those people on, that are front-facing, you know, that you see every day when they're you great. come into the restaurant, they're great they're people. Good. And, um, you know... Are you doing bet, lunch at Josephine's now, by the way? Now we do, yeah. You we do, do it yeah, now, okay. fi- Monday through Friday, brunch on Saturday, Sunday. And we have a huge patio there that's going to be open up, so... Yeah, outdoor dining. To me, yeah. that's like a revolution that's yeah, absolutely. wonderful. Yeah. yeah, Great thing. Yeah. So when are you two going out next? Uh, we were just talking, we were just talking about, about I think it. next week, or... Where are you going? I think... We were talking about Indian cuisine yeah. uh, right before the new year. Um, my personal sort of one is... Um, Korean barbecue. Yeah. So Korean barbecue is very What's healthy. What's the best Korean <laughs> barbecue joint? Yeah, what is the best one? What's the best one? Uh, this one on uh, Calm Ave. It used to be in the uh, the old uh, Petit Robert Bistro. Oh, sure. It's called uh, Naksan. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you go on the weekday, it's free valet. Uh, <laughs> That's ha- very important. Yeah, they have that. Are you on the payroll there? there? <laughs> You're like pitching a... Um, I, I'm trying to get my free... Uh, <laughs> cut the line over here. Do a little plug. But yeah. Uh, not honestly, it's a uh, great Korean barbecue, uh, great service, and great quality of food. So I'm pushing for that to be the next family meal. But um, you know what I love when people like you come in. There's there's a certain thing in the restaurant industry. I mean, when you mention another restaurant and praise it and how great it's really, I love that for whatever it's worth. Everything is so competitive and everything is so cutthroat, and particularly yeah. in tough times for the restaurant. I there's love a lot when, of camaraderie in this I, business. It's great. And you, yeah. I've, you've seen it firsthand. I, you know, at, your, at the fundraiser that we used to at the GBH yeah. Center, there, there's that big, you know, where all the chefs come in and we, we put our wares out. And well, he's done. You, you're doing a ton of community stuff too. Yeah. That's another yeah. element. That Brian is. It's another thing. It's yeah. not unique to the restaurant industry, no. but it's central no, to absolutely. the restaurant. Gentlemen, it was great to see you. Thank you. Happy one year anniversary on yeah, uh, two of your thank you. things. Yeah, thank you so, so much for coming in. Thank you for thank the you. wonderful food. The yeah, olive yeah. oil cake is yeah. unbelievable. Thank you. We've been speaking to a restaurant tours by uh, Michael Scalfo from Josephine in Somerville, Brian Moy from Soho, Shoho, Sojo. Shojo. Sojo. Exactly. Shojo. Okay. And fine. China Pearl after quick break. We are opening the lines for a little light way to end the week. Holding doors, offering seats on the train. Is chivalry really dead or just? in comatose. How long do you have to stand there and wait for somebody to cross the threshold? We'd like to hear what you think about chivalry in 2024. That's next. You're listening to Boston Public Radio 89.7 GBH. We are broadcasting live from the Boston Public Library and streaming at youtube.com slash GBH News. It's time to support Boston Public Radio on GBH. Listener contributions pay for the program and keep it on the air. You don't have to give much to make a difference. Please make a difference by giving now at gbhnews.org or by calling 888-897-9424. Okay, this is our uh, third day of pledge, and we have a wonderful prize for you today or gift or enticement, whatever you whatever want to call it, it. This is my favorite thing, of course. Let me crank it again. This is the Eton Crank Radio. Here's the deal with the Eton Crank Radio. You can recharge this. If you have a a bad situation, like bad weather, you lose your power, you can't charge your cell phone, you get out your Eton Crank Radio and you crank it. And it restores the battery so you don't have to worry about the thing going out. It also has radio. You can get AM and FM radio. You can get the weather channel, all the things you need during a disaster, LED flashlight and everything else. It's great to have these around the house. Somebody said before they have them in their garage when they do their work out there in their garage. They take them outside with them and they garden. Gym. So, to get one of these Eton Crank I use radios, mine when I'm gardening most of the time, yeah, too. Yeah, I know you're a great gardener, I'm Jim. A great gardener. I, I know that from your yep. neighbors Chauncey over there in gardener. Cambridge. So, for 10 bucks a month or 120 bucks all at once, you can get the Eton Crank Radio. But the reason we encourage the sustaining membership and the reason we offer uh, little enticements like this is because this helps the people that do the budget here at GBH make plans for the next year. And it really is important um, to... Basically, the planner. So we know it's 24 hours a day, seven uh-huh. days a week. We're on 15 hours a day. We are, not no, 15, 15 hours, hours a day. hours a no. week. A That's week, a lot. Yeah. That's and true. Uh, the whole thing comes free. So we count on the generosity 
of listeners like you, almost 70% or more than 70% of our money comes from listeners like you. 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. You know, we're moving through this pledge thing. I think this is day three. And if you're contemplating doing this, I, I, would, I would do it. Uh, because maybe you're going to be busy Monday or something and you forget about it. If you care about what you hear, whether it's us or the Culture Show, and by the way, let me say again, Culture Show will follow us in 37 minutes live right here at the Boston Public Library. So if you're here, stay. If you're not here, come, uh, please, and join Jared, Callie, Edgar, uh, maybe James. I'm not sure who's on today. Uh, but they all cost money, and you're getting it currently for free. And so if you support what we all do, and I assume you do, uh, give what you can. 888-897-942 for gbhnews.org. And it really feel if you support these shows and the people on them, and you don't know the people working behind the scenes as well as you should, because they are critical is an understatement. They are so central to whatever good we do in these places. Here's your opportunity to show that you care about them at 888-897-9424 or gbhnews.org. Welcome back to Boston Public Radio, live from the Boston Public Library, streaming at youtube.com slash gbhnews. Governor joins us next Tuesday here at the library, 11 and 12. And by the way, a lot of, a case of fabulous food just arrived, uh, courtesy of Brian uh, Moy. I'm not sure if it's Shoujo or China Pearl, but it looks scrumptious. So it's a commonly understood gesture of kindness to hold the door open for someone who's walking directly behind you so they can walk through too. But our most valuable asset is our time. So the chivalry tends to decrease the further away someone is from you. We've all been there. You linger as you're going through the door to check if someone's behind, and there is, but they're so far away, you're now locked in a minutes-long agony of awkward eye contact, forcing the other person to quickly shuffle so as to not waste your time. So basically, the lines are open. It's not just about holding a door. Giving somebody older a seat, for example, on the subway, saying maybe, I don't know, bless you or something, when someone sneezes is chivalry dead. Should we all just slow down a bit and hold the door literally and figuratively for other people? I know, as Marjorie asked me to say this, I'd hold the door open for both Kate Middleton and the Marchioness <laughs> of the whatever. Of In any case, what's her name? Here's the you. Marchioness of Chumley. That's who I'd hold the door the open for. The number is 877-301-8970. By the way, you mock me a lot, but let me just say, I am a chival chivalrous a uh, word. Yes, it is. I actually... <laughs> Excuse me. I believe. I actually do believe those little kindnesses. By the way, it's a yeah. it's a human okay. contact. And Jamie, what is the problem mm. with both of you? Yep. I believe in those kinds of little kindnesses that establishes a momentary kind of bond yeah. with other people. Yeah. Well, the last time I, I shared a meal a meal with you, Jim, we were out with a uh, gentleman uh, who a good friend uh, of ours. Pulled, a couple weeks ago, pulled pulled the chair out for me when I sat down. He did. Yeah. And uh, when I get up from the table, he get up from the table. Yeah. I didn't see you getting up from the table, Jim, or pulling the chair. I didn't out notice you were leaving at and that particular moment. Like that. Jim, Jim has a Jim has what a. What are motto. we both going to pull the chair out? I mean, what is the point? He was doing it. I was eating. Yeah, Jim Browdy, famously known for his little kindnesses. Yeah. Somebody just put that in the text. That was message. Jamie. Jim, I think I'm that afraid was in a sarcastic, I'm not sure. sarcastic kind of way. Yeah. And you have a motto, Jim. That what is it? I think that you've uh, embraced the philosophy of the former senator, John Kerry. Have you not? Why, why are you he, doing this? He gave you some advice. He did. I met him at a Denver airport <laughs> shortly after he lost the presidential election and said, how do you, I, mean, I didn't meet him. We bumped into each other uh -huh. at the Denver airport. I said, how do you even walk through an airport? With everybody? He says, never make eye contact. Never make eye now, contact. Now, he was half joking. I wasn't joking. And you've made that your mantra. That never is not true at all. Yes, it is. I told you that story for other reasons. And by the way, I would have pulled out Marjorie's chair. <laughs> But I was uh, otherwise engaged. 877-301-897. Okay. <laughs> when I lived in New York City and I was riding the subway every single day, mm -hmm. I never failed to get up. When there was somebody who, it was, uh, it was an older gentleman, yep. a pregnant woman, a person who needed the seat, I always got up and well, did Well, you know, that. a lot of people think these things are sexist, you know, these kind of gestures. I know they do. I know they where, do. Where, uh, you know, a man gets up and a woman leaves the table or pulls up the chair or opens the door in your car That's and why I didn't like do it. But... <laughs> <laughs> but but some about? of those things are kind of nice. You know, it's kind of nice. They are. I mean, women can open the doors for women, too, particularly women that are older than you. Yeah. You get into the car, you want to open yeah. the door for them and let them get into the car. But anyway, it, by the way, uh, a texter just says that they take the Larry David approach. You need to access if the person approaching would be offended if you held the door and decided the last second 
to let go of the door. Did this happen on one of his shows? Yeah, yes. we have that sound. In a, you want to, why don't we take a call or two, and then we'll play the sound in a few minutes, okay? Okay, let's go to Mary in... in uh, uh, I assume Rentham. Rentham. Hi. Hi. Hey, hi, guys. Why buy them when you can rent them? What, say that what? one more time. <laughs> what? I said, why buy them when you can rent them? Sure. Oh, that's a joke. That's oh, a joke about oh, rent them. Oh, I see. I, cut, I got it. Okay, cool. Them. That's a good yeah. one. When you got to repeat it four times, it's not that great. But go ahead. <laughs> Mary, we're thrilled to have you. What's up? What's up? You guys get the big bucks. That is That's exactly right. what. What's up, Mary? Um, years ago in New York, out in Gramercy Park, I held the door open for a lady as we were going into a thrift store. And she started screaming at me. How dare you? What's the matter with you? I can open my own door. And I said, okay, okay, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah. It didn't stop me from opening doors for other people. Yeah. Especially um, come a few years later to the future, yeah. I'm at the Emerson Majestic for the Flamenco Festival. Oh. And I opened the door for this wonderful elderly couple. Yeah. And... Um, I noticed that nobody was going to open the door for them. So not only did I open the door, I held the door. Wow. And as they were walking through, two yeah. able-bodied people came by and walked through as well. Oh, my God. So I turned around and I said, you know, <laughs> it takes a real lady to be a gentleman in this town. Well... Mary, you know Mary, how to live. That was and a great Mary, call. And Mary, we'd continue with you, but the show's over at 2 o'clock, so we got to move Mary, on. Mary, hold on. Give us the Rentham joke one more time, please. Yeah, what is it one more time? Hey, why buy them when you can rent them? <laughs> Thank you. No, it's much <laughs> better the that. third time. It was excellent. Thank you for sharing that with us. 877-301-8970. By the way, before we take a break, we have uh, came a little late. We're thrilled. Brian brought butter beef spring rolls oh. from Shoju and Shoujo and a couple of other fabulous catfish. looking thing. Oh, right, Cajun catfish Cajun or some catfish. incredible thing like that. In any case, we got to take a break. We have to take a break. But before, said before we do, I want to read a text here. The rules of chivalry and the rights of women are not compatible. Pulling a chair out for women is based on the perception of women as frail and weak. We need a new system, says Godfrey from Medford. By the way, I hold a door. Wait, that's a chair pulling or the door? Uh, pulling a chair. Well, I agree with that. But would you, I mean, uh, 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 holding a door is genderless, is okay, it not? Okay, it is genderless. Okay, I fine. guess so. Thank you. Okay, we're talking about chivalry, whether it's dead or not dead. You're listening to Boston Public Radio. We have broadcast. Casting live from the Boston Public Library and streaming at youtube.com slash GBH News. Think about it. For three hours every day, you get to hear thought-provoking conversations on local, national, and international issues for free. It only happens with your support. So please support your Boston Public Radio listening by calling 888-897-9424 or giving online at gbhnews.org. So here's the deal. I think we're midway through this uh, pledge drive this uh, year, and we are hoping, if you like what you hear, and by definition you must, or you wouldn't be listening unless you're like a masochist kind of person, you contribute to the cost of what you're getting currently for free. The number is 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. A ton of people who are first-time givers, we really appreciate, but there are also a lot of people who have left us notes saying that they are a regular contributor. They might even be a sustainer, but uh, to advance the cause in this pledge drive, they're giving additional money, which means a huge amount to us. So whether you're a first-timer, a second-timer, a third-timer, please contribute, 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. You know, the culture show, which I say is coming up at 2 o'clock in 28 minutes here live at the library, it's brand new. It's only been, how many months? Three months, four months, something Not like that? Long. It is, I don't think there, I, I don't know, I don't think there is a show like this on the radio anywhere in America. It is so full of life. I know. And you get to hear about so many things that are, on the, in my case, at least on the periphery of your life, that you didn't have an opportunity to learn more about, and you can by just listening from two to three every day. So there are a lot of wonderful things happening here. If you want to hear the governor, she's going to be with us an hour on Tuesday. All that is part of the deal at 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. And as you also say as well, Jim, we have a great staff, great uh, staff that helps us uh, do all the research and put all the stuff together for us, and also the people that run all this, the engineers and the people that put this Correct. all together. It takes, exactly right. I mean, this is a big operation. And as uh, someone reminded me the other day, they didn't have to remind me, I knew about it, but what was it? a texter said, you know, don't forget, the television, uh, Frontline just won an Academy Award for 20 Days in Mariupol, which, 
what is that? That is WGBH, or GBH as we call ourselves now. Mm -hmm. Frontline, Nova, Masterpiece Theater. They got this great thing, Nolly, N O L L Y, that's starting on Sunday night. How about the world down the hall the from us on the radio? Down the hall. It's fabulous. Yeah, and, and that's unique as well. I mean, it's broadcasting about all the issues around the world. So there's a lot of stuff going on. That's why it's called the world. That is why it's called the world. Exactly. Jim, thank you very much. You're welcome. So, anyway, there's a lot going on here, and if you appreciate what you listen, we appreciate your chipping in. The number, again, is 888. 897-9424, gbhnews.org is the website, and I want to add the Eton Crank Radio, emergency crank radio, is mm -hmm. only available until 2 o'clock, so if you want one of those babies, now's the time, 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. Welcome back to Boston Public Radio. I'm Mark Regan and Jim Browdy. We're live at the Boston Public Library, streaming at youtube.com slash GBH News. We'll be back at the library on Tuesday. Governor will join us for the first hour from 11 to 12, so we hope you join us too. We're talking about chivalry and the pros and cons, whether it's dead, whether you practice it. Marjorie thinks I don't. I try to. And if you do, why? And if you've given up on it, we'd like to know that as well. 877-301-8970. This is Bill from Bridgewater. Please. I actually held the door at a bank one time for a bank robber. As I oh. was leaving, this guy was walking in, came back the following week to cash my check. The cashier said, hey, you're the guy who held the door for the bank robber. Yeah. We saw you on the videotape. Luckily, no one was hurt, and I was never interviewed. And this is David from Warwick. If you see a man open a car door for a woman, you know it is either a new car or a new woman. <laughs> Dan in the car, you are next on Boston Public Radio. Thank you for your call. Hi. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Sure. Uh, yeah, that previous one, that's really funny because uh, so I, I, my parents raised me with all the chivalry things, you know. And I'm, I'm 28 years old and my girlfriend... Uh, they're non-binary. They're very, they're the most independent person I've ever met. Mm -hmm. Very liberal, very progressive, but you know, I still do the open the car door for them, you know, walk them to the door and, um, you know, and all of that stuff. And I just think it's like, I don't know. It, it just, it just puts this underglow on our relationship that I feel is very, uh, loving and, and friendly and caring. So what's Im implied um, in your comment, Dan, is as much as you like it, they like it as much as you do. I think so, yeah, yeah. That's great. And then the other thing that this made me thought, think of is, is uh, I know it's not really chivalry, but I teach a very rigorous uh, athletic marching band. And, you know, we got these teenagers in there, and they're burping left and right, but me and my co-teacher just made a rule that if you, if you burp, you have to say, excuse me, and if we catch you burping without saying excuse me after you have to do a push-up so, well i have to say i didn't know about the push-up requirement generally when i do that i apologize too dan thank you much for the call we appreciate it. we mentioned curb your enthusiasm mm -hmm. it's almost nothing we do for which there is not a curb your enthusiasm or a seinfeld show both from the same individuals here it is what why didn't you keep the door open oh um no no after you i i i didn't really get in after you Vibe. Well, why not? I'm a woman, aren't I? Yeah. Really? Well, I, I just didn't think you were the type who would want a guy to hold the door open. What for type you. am I? You know, you're a type. You have uh, short hair. You have a tie. You got a vest. It's a, it's a look. So you looked at me and then let a door shut on me. I thought you might not want that, that's all. I was just trying not to offend you, and yet I wound up offending you, which is quite ironic. It is quite ironic. 877-301-8970. It's quite ironic, not that funny, but it is ironic. Amy in Boston, welcome to the show. Hi. 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 Oh, hi. Um, I just wanted to um, share a story about Please. my daughter was dating this guy. I wish you would. And... Uh, the first time he came over, we were all sitting around having dinner, and my daughter sneezed, and he didn't say bless you. And my husband and I, we'd, <laughs> after dinner, we were like, do you notice he didn't say bless you? We both, it bothered us. And then, sure enough, the relationship did not last. Well, you could have predicted it. Sign. Couldn't you have predicted it from that bad behavior? Very bad sign. Yeah, very bad sign. Yeah, it was a bad sign. Red flag. Yeah, Red flag. Got to acknowledge the sneeze. Thank you very much. Thank you very Amy. much. Appreciate it. You know, a lot of people are complaining about how uh, someone will hold the door for them when they're too far away. Mm. So then they feel like they have to either jog up to the door 
or they they feel you know pressure to. Well, you uh, do feel sort of feel like saying move it kind quickly. of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good question. How, you know, do you open the door for somebody that's 20 feet behind you in the hallway, or is there a five well, foot actually, limit? Actually, no, I have something the answer. Like 11 feet is what I generally do. <laughs> if they're with, there's a mark in the hallway at GBH. If they're more than 11 yeah. feet, I slam the door. And then. If yep. you have to beep, you come in with your card because everybody's worried about security yeah. now. Are you supposed to let open the door for someone who may not have their card, Jim? Uh, you don't know who they are. Well, how do you know that they're not risk? like a felon? Well, you or don't something. exactly. You don't want to be like the person that let in the bank robber. Exactly. Everybody's mad at it afterwards. So, so do you hold the door open for the person who does no. not have their card behind you? Do you just close the door on them. By the way, the person who just pulled out your seat at that restaurant just texted you and me a heart, and it was surely not for me. <laughs> it was for you. So well, I think he it was very, very impressive. Well, he is the ultimate chivalrous His kind of character. His parents had very good manners, and they taught them to him. What are you saying too. about my mother? Well, um, she puts you to bed every night with an extra salami sandwich. sandwich. That's that correct. A bad sign. Now, someone just said they don't want anyone to pull the chair out for them. I'm so clumsy, she says, I will probably miss it and end up on the floor. By the way, this is an interesting uh, thing from uh, Zoe, our coworker. I'm a notorious door slammer at work. If I don't know you, even if I do... I'm closing the door behind me for security. You don't have your badge? Too bad. Not my problem. <laughs> Call Justin. <laughs> Just Justin is the head well, of security, or whatever he is. He's wonderful. Who you know, we work I think with. in the age of anxiety, uh -huh. uh, is always not alone. I think a lot of people. If you feel know that somebody, way. you don't. Well, that may be a little extreme. If you know them, she you said. Don't, if you don't she knows think them, all your friends are terrorists. I mean, yeah. that, that's kind of a little bit too, too. But if you don't know somebody, I mean, you don't know. You're going to get in trouble as the person let in the uh, bank robber. Exactly. Kathy and Concord, welcome. Oh, hi guys. How do you? Um, I just. I just got back yesterday from Ireland. And, oh, happy um, return. Yep, great. Sitting at the table with my husband, and we started chatting up with two guys who were, um, you know, talking to us. And I was shocked when I got up from the table. All of a sudden, this stranger who had been talking to picked up my coat, handed it to me, helped me put it on, and I had this strange sensation. My, my God, when's the last time that ever happened? Um, to somebody that, you know, was perfect stranger. And then the next week or so, everywhere we went, people were opening doors, uh, men, just, you know, and saying nice stuff. And so I think it's something... An Irish kind of thing. Country. But, you know, yeah. in all seriousness, I, I shouldn't even have used the word chivalry. It's like, it's like momentary, respectful human contact, right? Don't you, it makes you feel good, right, Kathy? Oh, yeah. And yeah. the funny story is the very next day, we were on a tour, what they call the Black Cab Tours in mm -hmm. Belfast. Um, yeah. And uh, sure enough, the next cab next to us, the same two guys, and um, come up, hug us like they've known Jeez. us all our life <laughs> and everything. And uh, it just makes you feel good. You when, you, when they hugged you, did you check for your wallet or you didn't do that? <laughs> Thank you. No, but they did want to ask. I tell you, more people ask about politics but when we were over there, yeah. uh, our politics, um, yeah. than, I, than I was really expected. Um, they're more concerned, as, and that's a side note from what we're talking about today, but that was something I noticed that uh, doesn't usually happen. Kathy, thanks. But anyway, thanks. I found them a whole trip. That's great. great. That's a great uh, anecdote to remember, share with us. Thank you so much. Remember the old actress... Tallulah Bankhead, sure. who I think she was around the 20s or 30s or something. Yeah. Anyway, there's a story apparently about her, says a texter, uh, having a door held open for her by a young starlet. Mm -hmm. uh, when Ms. Bankhead said thank you, the starlet replied, age before beauty. And Ms. Bankhead walked through the door, turned around and replied, pearls before swine. <laughs> That's a pretty good line. I think I've heard that. Yeah, that's pretty that's good. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. Do you know what happens when the clock winds down? Oh, we're going to do. We're, uh, uh, taking a break. We're taking a break. We're okay. Taking a break, yes. We're taking a quick break. We're talking we about chivalry. We haven't talked about people standing up for other people on the MBTA, particularly. Pregnant, oh, you have to tell your story women. when you were yeah, pregnant. If, yes. If that happens, uh, very yeah. much. Anyway, you're listening to Boston Public Radio 89.7 GBH, broadcasting live from the Boston Public Library, streaming at youtubecom News. Quick break, and we'll be back with more stories of chivalry or lack thereof. If you listen to Boston Public Radio three hours a day, that's 15 hours a week, 60 hours a month, and 720 hours a year. Maybe it's time you pitched in. Call 888-897-9424 or give online at gbhnews.org. 
Okay, we wanted to thank uh, the peop some of the listeners who've uh, given already and have given today. Linda from Nahant says, I have to have the radio because of Marjorie. Nahant. <laughs> Nahant, thank you, Nahant. Linda from Nahant said that. We also have uh, comments from Clea from Somerville, Elizabeth from Carlisle, Charlene from Sanbornville, Nancy from Shrewsbury, uh, Karen from East Weymouth, Marlene from Framingham. A lot more people have said comments about why they love GBH, and that makes us very, very happy and very, very appreciative. You know, before I ever thought I'd be on the radio, uh, I used to be a big fan of NPR stations, mm -hmm. and I donated, um, and I kind of felt kind of good about it because I was listening a lot, and I hadn't donated. So if you've listened a lot to this station, listened a lot to us, uh, and you haven't donated, I think it makes you feel pretty good to kind of chip in. It does. And again, look what's coming. You're getting the end of our show. I thought the show today was quite good. I enjoyed it at least. Then the culture show, The World, ruins on in the late afternoon, tomorrow morning, Jeremy in Paris. Not to mention all the great national NPR stuff that we carry here, too. It's really, it's a great place to be. And if you spend a decent part of your life here, it's an opportunity to contribute to the cost of it at 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. And can you do a little cranking while we're talking? I can do a little cranking. This is only available till 2, by the oh, way. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, the till Eton 2. The Eton Emergency 15, Crank Radio. 15 minutes. Or as Margaret called it, the Elon Tank Radio. Yeah, whichever right. you prefer. Does everything. Yeah. It's like the Swiss Army knife. That's not my line. It's a great line, though, of uh, what if you call it? Radios. AM, FM, that's enough. National Weather Service Channel. Uh, you can hand crank or solar power. You never need batteries. LED flashlight. And it can, most, to me, most importantly, charge your cell phone if it's an emergency. $10 a month, $120 all at once at 888 eight 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 eight. Okay, 888-897-9424. Why do you, or gbhnews.org, why do you like it so much? I don't know. I just, it's just kind of funny. By the I way, think. I want to say one thing. I, I want to be honest. I always uh -huh. try to be honest during yes, the Jim. pledges. I'm ready. I like the Eton Emergency Crank Radio. Mm -hmm. I had no interest in it until you told me it had an antenna. As soon as... <laughs> I learned that it actually That's came right. with an antenna. See that? Chain, can you there it extend is. it? There it is. What do you think of the antenna, everybody? Pretty great, right? <laughs> Look at the audience. They're wild yeah. over the antenna. Yeah. It's beautiful. And I did call it the Elon Tank Radio, but you, you know did. something Close as I enough. always say, Jim? Yeah. I think it's important to know that even people that have speech impediments and speech can be problems on the radio. can have a talk show. You know, That's just because beautiful. you can't talk and yeah, get everything exactly. backwards it's irrelevant. doesn't mean you too can have a career. Okay, what's the number? 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. Welcome back to Boston Public Radio. Jim Browdy and Marjorie Egan. We are rounding the bend, rounding I believe the is bend. the expression. And we are talking about chivalry or just basic politeness to other human beings, particularly people you don't know. At 888, what's our number? 877 301 8970 for text or call. Tell the story about you as a uh, pregnant well, person. Well, I think a lot of women that take the tea and are pregnant can, reckon, uh, can relate to this. I remember when I was you know, very pregnant, like nine months pregnant, enormous. Uh, I used to take the tea all the time, the green line all the time, and, and I'd be stunned at how infrequently. A man would I'm stand up. Too. Women would stand up almost all the time if they saw your big, huge belly, you know. Uh, but men wouldn't. So I always thought it was weird. I remember one time I was kind of frustrated. And I just <laughs> walked over and I put my big, huge belly about six inches from this, like, 20-something guy's face. And he just kind of ignored me completely. So I'm interested if any women have experienced pregnancy non-politeness on the MBTA. Let's go to Michelle in the car. Thank you for calling. Hey, Michelle. Hi there. How are you? Fine, Good. thanks. First of all, I, I love, 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 love your program. Thank you. Secondly, my my husband is very chivalrous. My husband is very chivalrous, and he he taught Oops. my sons the same thing. He, um, I had teenage boys that would run to the window and watch to make sure that whomever their sisters were dating would open the door for them and judge them. <laughs> That's pretty and great. To this day, they're, at, they're adults today, and my husband still opens the door for me and anybody else anytime he's in front of me, or and the boys do the same thing. So do I you open the door, it, Michelle? Do you open the, Do you open the door for your husband? I absolutely would. Good. Absolutely. Good. Great, Michelle. Thanks. Uh, sounds like a nice family. Have a great we have a day. you too. Couple of texters: Val from Gloucester, and Nicole, both talking about a variation on chivalry. A strangers paying for their meals, that pay it forward kind of thing. Yeah. Do you remember when we used to have toll booths? And, and people, somebody in front of you mm -hmm. would pay your 50 cents or a dollar and you got up there 
And so, how great did that behind. make you feel? It, it, yeah, it pay it forward. It was a really, it was a really yeah. nice thing. Listen to this. A few years ago, I was coming out of the general store in Chilmark or Martha's Vineyard. They have a swing door that you're supposed to hold open for the next person. The person had to be didn't, and it slammed right in my face. I told the woman, thank you so much for holding the door for me. She turned around and gave me a smirk, and it was a famous actress. Should I say who it was? Sure. Marisa, Marisa Tomei. Oh. She said she was very shocked. And because um, she's a terrific actress, seems like a lovely person, but apparently she was not very nice, according to this texter, on Chilmark and Martha's Vineyard. So here is Aiden tells us a term I didn't know before, shrivelous. Do you know what that means? No. To insist on help, oops, to insist on helping someone solve a problem only to make it worse, much worse. That's a problem when you do attempt to help somebody and you create a deeper hole yeah, for that person. Exactly. When someone says they know how to do something and they really don't, and then they make it worse. That's, that's why I didn't uh, pull your chair out <laughs> when our friend did pull your chair out. I was afraid I'd make it worse. Well, Mike from uh, North Carolina says, Jim held the door for me once at Magoni's. That would be the restaurant in Swansea, Massachusetts, never... across the river, before he put them out of business. <laughs> I did not put them. By the way, you told me they're reopening. They're reopening. And they're going to have a roof deck. It's going to be very nice. Looking really? Overlooking the mighty Taunton River and looking across at my hometown of Fall River. Yeah. Tell the whole thing. I read the story. You gave me the story. Every table on the roof deck is going to have a can of Chef Boyardee. <laughs> Right in the middle with a can opener and a Bunsen burner. Yeah, I tell you that's what. That's a beautiful my thing. My whole family went to their, their last night at the old Magoni's. Oh, and that's nice. They were missing some of the letters and the signs. I know, that is true. It's a problem. But uh, they went to last night, New Year's Eve. They shut the place down. They were oh, there, like that's past beautiful. closing, at like 2 or 2 30 in the morning. That's lovely. Everyone was in tears, Jim. So a you lot told of me you're going to take me when it reopens. Magonis. You're going to take me? Uh, absolutely. We'll sit you in hold the roof the door? deck. Well, it, well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Jim, why don't you sit closer to the edge of the roof? <laughs> yeah, we're, no, a little closer. A little closer. Oh, Phil in Rhode Island. You only you have a minute, calling. Phil. Go. Hi. Phil. Phil, you called us. I guess we okay, lost, Phil. Okay, Phil, thank you. Uh, anyway, sorry that didn't work out that for didn't work out. both sides. Do you have anything else you want to say? Uh, no, I, I have nothing else I have, I have to say, except I thank you very much for people that donated today. If you want to get the Eton Crank Radio, you still have 10 minutes to go, and it is kind of neat to have minutes. this. It's kind of an insurance thing. It is? You know how we used to have landlines so we wouldn't have to no, worry if the electricity that. went out yeah. and you lost it? Well, if you're in a car, a the landline's not that much help. No, you know? but if you're in your house, then the charge yeah. goes out in your phone. You have no electricity None. for... Hours. Wait, your phone doesn't work if there's no electricity, does it? The landline? I can't remember that far yes, back. Yes, it, it did. Does? Absolutely. Did? Okay. Yes, and your Eton Crank Radio yeah. can restore power to your uh, mobile phone if you need. Can? Yes, and so that's a very important How many thing. do you own? Uh, well, I have several. I'm not sure where they are, but I have, <laughs> I have several. Shocking. By the way, can I just say one thing about that before we close? Uh -huh. They're not that useful if you can't find them. That's been my experience. <laughs> it's true. It's very good to be able to find them if you want to use yeah, them. Yeah, okay. You can leave one in your car, by the way. Do you know that? You can leave one in your car. And then you crank yeah, it there. You can. Thank you very much for Thank listening you to very us much. today. Thank you very, very much to people who contributed Thank today. Thank you for coming, you for everybody. Yeah, thank you for people who came down yeah. to the Boston Public Library. If you haven't had enough of us, you can keep up with us 24-7 by way of our podcast. We have a three-hour one, the whole show, and then we have a half-hour one, which is the highlights of the show of the day. Mm -hmm. On Monday, we're going to talk with the Reverend Zaire Monroe and Emma G. Price III, NYU medical ethicist Art Kaplan, about the guy who got the pig MGH, kidney. is that where it was? Yes, the transplant. Unbelievable. I know. Uh, GBH news analyst Charlie Sennett will be with us to talk about our you know, difficulties around the world. And our travel bestie, PBS European travel guru, Rick wait. Steve, who we love to talk to because he's so cheerful and uplifting. We want to thank our crew, Zoe Matthews, Aidan Conley, Nicole Garcia, Hannah Loss, our engineer, John McClaw Parker, our executive producer, Jane Bologna, the BPL staff, Matthew Glover, Maddie Geyer, Carly Cochran, Isabella Karen, Sandra Lopez Burke, as well as our hosts here at the Newsfeed Cafe. Thank you very much for letting me in in the morning because Jim never does when the door is locked. And we thank I was sitting when you knocked there. on the window. Wasn't when I'm rapping on the window. I knew and someone of course, else would. The gentleman across the street. Thank you. Yeah, it's very chivalrous. That's a very good point, thank you. Zoe. Can I say thank something you. or no? Uh, well, I want to thank the guys at Lennox Hotel. Oh, go ahead. Thank the them, please. Yeah. And the culture show is on right after us at 2 o'clock. At Bad River, Mary Mazio was with us the other day, the fabulous film about this David and Goliath battle between a native tribe in the Midwest and a, uh, let's put it this way, a power company. It's beautiful. It's extended a week at the AMC Boston Common 19 or whatever it is over there. You know where it is. It's a fabulous, inspiring film. I'm Jim Browdy. I'm Marjorie Egan. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Hope you can tune in on Monday and have a wonderful Thank weekend. Thank you. 
This is the GBH Spring Membership Drive, and today we're asking you to consider the value you get from GBH, whether that's on the radio, online, maybe you're a guest uh, at the Boston Public uh, Library with Jim and Marjorie and the Culture Show. Whichever way you uh, you join us, uh, please think about that and make a contribution. Support these services. That's how public radio works. We're funded primarily by listeners. So please give now at gbhnews.org or call us at 888 897 Four two four. Good afternoon. I'm Mark Cohen. I'm joined by Zach Finn. And you only have eight minutes here to uh, get in on this Eton Emergency Radio. It's that rechargeable radio. It's the AM, FM, and National Weather Service channels. It's got the multiple power sources. Again, eight minutes to get this. You wind it up, you get the news and weather updates. It's just fantastic. It's got the LED flashlight built right in. And can even give your cell phone a charge in a pinch. I mean... You know, you got to have it. Sign up as a sustaining member, $10 a month, and ask for the Eton Radio. You only, again, eight minutes, only till 2 p.m. Got to act fast. It will not be available for the rest of the drive. Go online, gbhnews.org, or give us that call right now, 888-897-9424. And to help us wrap up, uh, Jim and Marjorie, this hour, we're looking for 18 contributions in the next seven minutes, 18 contributions by 2 o'clock. If you haven't made that uh, show of support yet, please take a couple of minutes right now. Every gift really matters so much. Much. Again, 18 contributions, 888-897-9424, or go online securely over at gbhnews.org. GBH has the news that gets you up to speed in the morning and keeps you informed all day long. Your contribution to GBH allows us to be an invaluable community service that's free and accessible to everyone. GBHnews.org or 888-897-9424. And again, time running out to get in on the Eton Emergency Radio. Uh, Marjorie certainly has been talking about it. We're here to remind you that it goes away at 2 o'clock and it goes away for the remainder of our drive. It's yours now for $10 a month on our sustainer plan or a one-time gift of $120. Such a great uh, thing to have in the house if the power goes out. Also great to take with you uh, in your car, maybe on a camping trip. Uh, leave it in your boat if you're getting ready to put it in the water. Uh, but in any way, it's, uh, it goes away at 2 o'clock, so time running out. Eton Emergency Radio is $10 a month on our sustainer plan. 888-897-9424 online at gbhnews.org. Big thank you out to Susan in Sudbury who says she's a devoted listener, loves the Jim and Marjorie show. Hard to hard to argue with that, Susan. We appreciate your support so much. Join Susan right now while you still have the opportunity. Go online, gbhnews.org, or again, give us that call, 888-897-9424. And you know, GBH's most important source of funding is listener contributions, and your donation right now, more important than ever. Hey, we know not everyone can give right now, but if you have the means, please make a contribution. Your support really will help us maintain our service to you at a time when it is needed the most. You can do so securely online. Look for the Donate button over at gbhnews.org or call us 888-897-9424. And again, you only have five minutes here to join in on the uh, on the Eton action, $10 a month. And uh, we're going to thank you again with that Eton Emergency Radio. It's the rechargeable radio. Again, AM, FM, National Weather Service channels. What can this thing not do? I don't have an answer for you, but sign up as a sustaining member. $10 a month. Ask for the Eton. Five minutes to go. You only have, again, until 2 o'clock. It is gone for the rest of the drive, so go online right now. GBHnews.org or 888-897-9424. All right, just seven more contributions we're looking for in the next five minutes. You know, meeting that goal will help us stay on track for the membership drive and ensure that we have the money needed to pay for all your Boston Public Radio, the Culture Show, World, Morning Edition, all things considered uh, wait, wait, don't tell me so much more in the months ahead. So please give what you can, maybe $10, $15 a month or more on our sustainer plan. Be one of these seven people uh, that we're looking for uh, now in the next five minutes to help us meet that goal. 888-897-9424, gbhnews.org. And, you know, you might be thinking, I'm just going to go ahead and make that contribution later. So let me ask you, when exactly might that be? Now, it's not the kind of thing that goes on the calendar, and as much as you rely on GBH, it's probably not going to be top of mind when you're not listening. 
you've decided it's important to support GBH, so please take that two minutes right now and get this done. All we need is basic contact and payment information, whether you give online or over the phone. GBHnews.org or 888-897-9424. GBH, of course, we are a nonprofit public radio station. You can tell that because of the high quality of what you hear each day. You can tell because of the stories and perspectives about our region and the world. Hey, you could also tell because, you know what, you're listening to a membership drive right now. We're here asking you directly, please support GBH. That makes such a difference in your life. Online at gbhnews.org or call us at 888-897-9424. And we're down to three minutes. you got three minutes left. Two o'clock is that cutoff line for the Eton Emergency Radio. Again, rechargeable radio, AM, FM, National Weather Service channels, multiple power sources. Again, this thing can do anything, but you got to call again three minutes gbhnews.org or 888-897-9424 hey kathleen in newburyport thank you for your contribution you are the newest member of the gbh family thank you so much for taking the time to join us also want to say thanks to wayne out in stowe uh also dorothy in middleton uh, all great reasons uh, to listen that's your reason for giving we're encouraging you to do your giving right now at 888-897-9424 online at gbhnews.org. The monthly sustaining membership is the preferred way to support GBH. It's quick and easy to set up. Just pick an amount for a reoccurring charge from your bank account or your credit card. Many folks start out by giving $10 per month, so please take those few minutes right now and get signed up. gbhnews.org or 888-897-9424. All right, this is it. Your last call to get in on the Eton Emergency Radio. It goes away at 2, and after that, it is gone for the remainder of the drive. A great offer. Uh, our way of saying thanks for your support of $10 a month on our sustainer plan, the Eton Emergency Radio. Uh, one of It's a fan favorite. We want to make it yours. 888-897-9424. Online, G gbhnews.org. What's trending? What's interesting? What's going on around town? We're talking all things arts and culture on The Culture Show, next on GBH 89.7. Funding for our programs comes from you. And Atlantic Design Center by Eldridge Lumber and Hardware, committed to helping you achieve your vision for a new kitchen or bathroom and guiding you from design to completion with showrooms in York and Portland, Maine. AtlanticDesignCTR.com And Celebrity Series of Boston, presenting David Sedaris live at Symphony Hall on April 12th. You can hear the humor writer's observations marked by his expansive curiosity and biting wit. Tickets at CelebritySeries.org From GBH News, I'm Soraya Wintersmith. This is what is owed. It might surprise you to hear the U.S. has paid reparations before, once in the 1980s in response to Japanese internment, and then again through the National Indian Claims Commission. Why has the United States been willing to do it in those instances and not in the instance of African Americans? Professor Kendi, you're posing my exact next question. What is owed? Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Trusted. Local. News. You're listening to 89.7 WGBH, HD1 Boston, online at gbhnews.org. GBH News with NPR. And didn't really say anything about it. I mean, there's... And you it's forgot. Bizarre. Discovered them by the dumpster. By a dumpster in, yeah, yeah, in Europe. Yeah, claims to have discovered them by a dumpster in Europe. But the, the, the point of the point yeah. here is that people can do the right thing because they did this by going to consulting the National Stolen Art File, which yeah. is operated by the FBI. It's basically a database. They had reason to believe that something might appear there. They searched it, and sure enough, one of the, the items matched up, and that's how they were able to work with the Smithsonian and return them. And the same thing, again, could happen with the Gardner Museum because it's, Edgar, as you said, there was the basically the immunity granted, and I know the authorities have long said it's the same for the Gardner theft, too. Come forward, let's talk. You may get $10 million dollars, also, fear of prosecution is probably off the table. Yeah. So there is a mechanism to do the right thing. Well, the other big uh, news about things going home to where they should be, and it's especially meaningful here, is, Kelly, I know you're very, very happy about very this. Happy. A pair, <laughs> one of the four remaining pairs of ruby slippers worn by Judy Garland in The Wizard of Oz has gone back to its rightful owner. I love it. Um, this guy collected it. He bought it. Um, legitimately, and then it got stolen from him. One guy confessed to it, and another guy 
who was with him still maintains that he had nothing to do with it, but maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But the point is, um, now they're back. Uh, there are six pairs that she used during the movie. They're uh, red covered in red sequins. Apparently, one of the two of them thought there were actual rubies on the shoes, hence stealing the <laughs> shoes is going to make them millionaires. The shoes are actually worth $3.5 million, so they are valuable, but not because they're encrusted with rubies. Um, and now, uh, 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 Minnesota, where she's from, the legislators there have put aside money because they would like to have the shoes be in a museum dedicated to her. I mean, I love this story. And of course, who doesn't love The Wizard of Oz? Yeah, it's yeah. true. Although, the, you, you know, there is, like, it is a great story. It is wonderful that they have come oh, home. Oh, you're going to rain on my parade. Well, I'm going to rain on I'm just going to, let's look at the timing and sequence of events yes. here, right? So they were stolen. They were recovered back in 2018. So they've been, the, we, we've had them back for some time. They come back this week, and immediately it is announced that they are going to be going on a world tour yeah, in true. advance of an auction, yeah. in which case they are going to be auctioned off for at least, it's, <laughs> it's expected to be $3.5 million. Mm -hmm. And as you said, the state of Minnesota now has a bill. The Senate has said we should buy them. And when we buy them, we can then loan them to the museum, which is the same museum where they were stolen from, where they are right now anyway. So, I don't, I mean, it's Edgar, great. No. There's no place like home. No. <laughs> <laughs> and this is her childhood home. I mean, it should be said, this museum, this museum is like in this place in Minnesota because it's Judy Garland's yes. home. So, yes. it is a great place for it to be. I'm just, you know, there's the whole world tour and the auction. Well, you know. there's nothing like thievery to create a great public relations <laughs> exactly, campaign for exactly. being able to turn around and sell your own works. But if people want to see them now. You can see them yeah. maybe out at the Motion Picture, Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences Museum in Los Angeles. I was there recently. I was scrolling through my photos today. I didn't think I saw They're them because I surely there. would have taken a picture. Yeah. But we also yeah. can see them at the Smithsonian in yeah. Washington. Mm -hmm. Well, coming up, the Andy Warhol Foundation settles a landmark copyright case. What does this mean for artists? That's next on The Culture Show, broadcasting live from our GBH studio here at the Boston Public Library. The Culture Show is made possible in part by a generous contribution from the Fiducia Fund, proud to support this station's arts and culture programming. This is the GBH Spring Membership Drive. Today we're asking you to consider the value that you get from GBH and the Culture Show. Whether it's on the radio, online, maybe our newsletters that you take a look at, well, then please make a contribution to support these services. That's how public radio works. We are funded primarily by listeners by you. Please give now at gbhnews.org or at 888-897-9424. Good Friday afternoon. I'm Henry Santoro. Join this hour by Zach Finn. And this hour we're looking to receive 10 contributions in about the next 42 minutes, and your gift is going to help pay for the news that you try and help make this membership drive a success. GBHnews.org or 888-897-9424 and give as generously as you can. Support GBH will thank you with a $50 gift card to Legal Seafoods. They're only available today. The gift cards are good for dine-in and carry-out so you can enjoy the bounty of the sea and all that Legal Seafoods has to offer from your home or wherever you may be. Sign up as a sustaining member, $10 a month or $120 at once, and we're happy to send you the uh, Legal Seafoods gift card at gbhnews.org or 888-897-9424. And we're giving away two two pairs of tickets to Broadway and Boston's touring production of Company, the Tony Award-winning musical. The performance is Wednesday, April 10th at 7.30 p.m. at the Citizens Opera House in Boston. Two lucky winners will receive a pair of tickets to Sondheim's groundbreaking musical comedy. Enjoy wonderful orchestra seats and let Broadway come to you. Please support your future GBH listening and get uh, get a chance to win a pair of tickets to see company when you do. Now that deadline is rapidly approaching. It's coming up here at 3 o'clock. And remember, you don't have to give to be entered, but we sure hope you will. GBHnews.org or 888-897-9424. 
Every day you hear the difference on GBH, the in-depth and unbiased news, the thoughtful and civil conversations, the stories told in a way that only GBH can tell them. It's truly news that matters. If you've never given before, now is the time to invest in GBH. It's your support that ensures you can cover the issues, chase down the facts, and keep you up to date each and every day. Choose a monthly amount, maybe five, ten dollars a month, or become a new sustaining member at GBH at eight eight. 8-8-8-8-9-7-9-4-2-4 or gbhnews.org. GBH has the news that gets you up to speed in the morning and keeps you informed all day long. Your contribution to GBH allows us to be an invaluable community service that's free and accessible to everyone. gbhnews.org or 888 897 9424. And we want to send you this uh, Legal Seafoods gift card. Sign up at $10 a month or $120 all at once and enjoy what Legal Seafoods has to offer. The fried clams, that fisherman's platter, oysters in the half shell, you name it, they've got it. Support GBH will thank you with a $50 gift card to Legal Seafoods available only today. It goes away at 7 o'clock when we wrap up for the day. The gift cards are good at all locations, the waterfront, Copley Square, even Logan Airport, even the legal seafoods up and down the East Coast. 888-897-9424 or gbhnews.org. And we have nine contributions to go in about the next 35 minutes to stay on track this hour. The success of this membership drive depends on all of us joining together. Please help pay for the news by making that contribution now. gbhnews.org or give us a call 888-897-9424. Welcome back to The Culture Show, broadcasting live from the GBH studio at the Boston Public Library. I'm Jared Bowen with co-hosts Kelly Crossley and Edgar B. Horwick III. If you're just tuning in, it's our Arts and Culture Week in Review. And we have a bit of breaking news, actually. This is something we haven't talked about on The Culture Show, although the culture is certainly talking about it, but we didn't know how to approach it. But this is coming from Buckingham Palace, where the Princess of Wales has announced that she has been diagnosed with cancer and has begun chemotherapy. This is an announcement that she made on the BBC, and so she has described the past two months as incredibly tough for our entire family. Again, this is just breaking news as news outlets are covering this, so that's what we know about that situation at the moment. We move now to Australia, though, and this Department of Irony, an art exhibition designed to highlight how women have been excluded from public spaces for centuries, is now being sued for discrimination. I often kind of disclose my favorite story of the week, and I find this one to be absolutely (laughs) fascinating. So this is taking place at the Museum of New and Old art or Mona in Tasmania and the artist is Kersha Kachel and she's known for pretty provocative work in the past she's done a wall of vulvas she has done a had a piece featuring a, a slaughtered bull and more but the latest piece she's created in this private museum is a ladies lounge where it's very beautifully appointed. There's wonderful art in it, including Picasso, and there are butlers who serve the women champagne, but it's only allowed access to women so far. Well, who sues? A man. There it goes. And so how does she answer that man? She tells him, well, this is the point. And by you suing, you are proving my point because this is all about gender inequity in Australia. Right. And she said, um, as she was making the piece, she pointed out that there were still some places and that you cannot go as a woman uh, outside of these very specific lounges set aside for women. So she's like, what are you talking about? The stuff exists today is not even history. You know, <laughs> I just think it's crazy that this guy, I'm thinking he's not a well-known artist and this is a way for him to propel himself to the front <laughs> of the line. Somebody to pay attention to him. <laughs> I mean, I, I love everything about this story. Um, you know, she's, she has said that, and, and I love that she's gone through the exercise in her head of thinking through this, right? So he has kind of come to the court and he said, well, you're excluding me. And she said, no, 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 no. You are experiencing the piece of art. Th- like, you are experiencing it differently than the women who are inside, but you are still participating and experiencing this work of art as it was intended to be. I'm intending you to feel this way. You're just feeling what I meant for you to feel. And proving my point. Yes. Which is fantastic. Yeah. And then have you seen what they, what she and a group did yes. in the courtroom, which is just like <laughs> insane. So she takes this whole thing, and I think she said it was interesting to see the artwork come to life in a courtroom. So her 25 supporters come into the courtroom. They're all wearing like Navy business attire. 
They engage through the, the hearing in choreographed movements where they cross their legs at the same time or they <laughs> lean in at the same time or they peer over their glasses at the same time. All of it's silent. And then when it's over, they exit to the Robert Palmer song, <laughs> Simply Irresistible. <laughs> I mean, this is so. And they're wearing fan- pearls. Yeah, and all I mean, of that. this is yeah. so yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And like, again, like, what I love is this has been intellectually thought through, top to right. bottom. And like, the we are watching this piece of art play out. It's fantastic. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's a very deliberate piece of conceptual art. And I, Edgar, I think you're you're right because if you consider Australian law, it allows that you can discriminate when the discrimination is in. It, it, discrimination is intended to create equal opportunity right so this and really is. is playing out as the artist fully intended knowing that somebody would turn around and sue and he's suing on the basis that here you have this, these great opportunities that I can't have access to you have great art that I can't have access to you have great champagne and butler serving it that I can't yeah. have access to uh, but we'll follow this certainly but it doesn't seem like it's going to go well for him because no. it falls within the spectrum of the law we should also point out she's married to the guy who owns the private museum who's pretty wealthy so I I'm thinking she said, bring it. I'll just, yeah. <laughs> you, you want to sue me? Come on. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and the piece you know. is, she, she named the piece such because part of the inspiration mm-hmm. was not many, it wasn't that many years ago that she was told when That's she right. was in a bar you that she, you might yeah. be more comfortable in the ladies' right. lounge. So, you, you know, go. it's great. Well, I have to say, when I read about this too, it reminded me of a piece I saw present a theater piece called Passover presented, uh, I can't remember the theater company, may have been Speakeasy Stage Company or, or Company One either, or maybe a collaboration. But at the end of this piece, all black and brown people are invited oh, to right. stay yes. for a healing circle. Yes. Mm. And basically anybody who is white is encouraged or not invited to stay, but is encouraged to leave. And I remember experiencing it that. And it was a horribly uncomfortable feeling about being told yeah. you are no longer welcome here. Yeah. But the point was made. Mm. And so I absolutely <laughs> yeah. further understood what this artist in Australia yes. is doing. Mm. Well, moving on to a case that made its way to the Supreme Court here in the United States. This is also a pretty fascinating one because artists are always riffing on other artists, whether it's in music or whether it's in painting. And if you look at the work of Andy Warhol, he certainly did that with his Campbell soup cans and his Marilyns. And so there was a case that worked its way all the way up to the Supreme Court, as I mentioned, about uh, a woman, Lynn Goldsmith, who had taken a picture of prints. Warhol licensed it once by way of Vanity Fair for an artist they did in the 1980s uh, so that he could do his Warhol treatment of prints. And then when he died, Vanity Fair, I believe it was Vanity Fair, used Mm -hmm. that image again. Uh, But Lynn Goldsmith, the artist, then sued, saying, you've inappropriately appropriated my work here, and I haven't been fully compensated. He went up to the the Supreme Court. There was a 7-2 decision saying they shouldn't have done that. Uh, But this opened up a whole can of worms in terms of when is it appropriate or when you've been inspired by another artist or when are you really ripping them off? Also, uh, he made a series, not just one piece from her one photograph. Um, So we've seen some of this with the Shepard Fairley conversation about his photograph of Barack Obama and where did that draw that line. We're involved as journalists because this is around the Fair Use Act, but we we can argue appropriately that we can use some stuff out uh, to talk about a story or explain a story, but we're not generally profiting from it. So I think when you get to that point, then you get into arguments, for example, with some of the rappers who've, quote, sampled other Mm -hmm. people's work. And yes, I guess you can to some extent, but then it gets to the point, wait a minute now, that's my stuff and you owe me you know, some compensation and also some some uh, attribution. So it's a fine line, and I guess in this case, she was able to convince him, seven to two, that he crossed the line. It's tricky because, mm-hmm. you know, and it, there's a couple of things. One, there, there are scholars who have noted that it's a little unclear how narrow or broad this um, f- this sort of result is going to end up being. So it was largely the ruling was on the licensing, right? Right, which is the marketplace situation, right, and not on the creativity thing. Heretofore, like up until this point, it sounds like you know, kind of the standard in all of these court cases around this stuff would be like, does this new work, con- is, this, is this new work or this other work that has stolen or lies, whatever, that is using the original work, 
is it wholly new enough? Is it is it somehow doing something that makes it different enough? Transformative, I Transformative. think it's the word the, the court used. Yes. And it's a little unclear whether this ruling's touching that or not. It's more like, is this like kind of a business decision? And I think mo like when you look at what legal scholars have said around this, I think they're all saying, we're not really sure. Like, we're not really sure what the impact of this is gonna be. We suspect that courts all over the country are probably gonna take different signals from this and that something's gonna end up back in the Supreme Court on this again, well, eventually. And what became so fascinating is that the court did have to weigh on this and the court did have to wade into this murky area of art. By the way, for people wondering why we're talking about this, even though it went to the court a while ago, it's because just this week, the Warhol, Warhol Foundation agreed to pay $21,000 to finally put this to bed and yeah. settle it. But interestingly, Elena Kagan and Justice, Chief Justice John Roberts were the two dissenters, I, opposite sides yep. of the ideological uh, logical spectrum, although they argue that that doesn't exist in the court, yeah. perhaps we've seen otherwise, but they came together uh, really on the merits of the art and saying, wait, the rest of you justices, you're not understanding the purpose of art here and you're creating damaging precedent because mm -hmm. art is always about this kind of exchange. So it was fascinating to just watch this play out in the court and as you say, Edgar, where does it go next? Because surely we will encounter this again and again and again. And who defines transformative? Exactly. You know? well, Art is very yeah, subjective. Absolutely. I mean, and so. and it is, it is it, you know, on the, it, it's kind of funny. I, I don't know if it's funny. It's something to watch these legal scholars kind of talking about what makes something transformative mm -hmm. in the world of art. They are experts in many things. Most of them are not experts mm -hmm. in the world of art. And I think some people have, have criticized this and said, wait a minute, you're reducing what Andy Warhol was about to essentially an Instagram filter and you're missing the, po like you yeah. don't understand what art is about. Mm -hmm. So it's tricky, I mean, it, it, it's tricky. Again, I hope that this ends up being a narrow decision and is really about the marketplace, because some people said that could actually be good for some artists too. I mean, this is an artist versus an artist. The photographer right, exactly, is an artist too. Exactly. So tricky, I don't know. And we're certainly not going to decide it in these few seconds no, here. absolutely not. <laughs> well, coming up, what is a weekend? If you're Callie Crossley, it's what you need in order to <laughs> fully experience a third Downton Abbey movie. That and more is next on The Culture Show, live from our GBH studio at the Boston Public Library. <laughs> Message to you, Rudy. The most important part of GBH's operating budget comes from listener contributions. That's how public radio works. Please become a sustaining member during our spring membership drive, which we began this week. You can sign up at gbhnews.org. Just click the donate button there or give us a call at 888-897-9424. Once again, good Friday afternoon to you. I'm Henry Santoro, news, uh, news anchor and host here at GBH. And once again, I'm joined by by Zach Finn. Support GBH and we're going to thank you with a $50 gift card to Legal Seafoods. They are only available today. The gift cards are good for dine-in and carry-out so you can enjoy the bounty of the sea and all that Legal Seafoods has to offer from your home or wherever you may be. Sign up as a sustaining member at $10 a month or you can give $120 all at once and enjoy a Legal Seafood meal and support GBH while you're doing it. That deadline is coming up at 7 o'clock so please go ahead right now give online at gbhnews.org or give us that call 888-897-9424 right now we are looking to receive eight contributions in the next 27 minutes that's uh, very easily attained that's an easy goal for us to hit please sign up as a sustaining member or make a one-time gift it's up to you gbhnews.org or 888-897-9424 the money that you give now will help fund the news in the months ahead gbhnews.org or 888-897-9424. And we're giving away two pairs of tickets to Broadway and Boston's touring production of Company, the Tony Award-winning musical. The performance is Wednesday, April 10th at 7.30 p.m. at Citizens Opera House in Boston. Two lucky winners will receive a pair of tickets to Sondheim's groundbreaking musical comedy. Enjoy wonderful orchestra seats and let Broadway come to you. Please support your future GBH by uh, listening and get a chance to win this pair of tickets. Tickets uh, to see company when you do that deadline is coming up rather quickly here at 3 p.m. GBHnews.org or 888 897 9424. 
GBH continues to expand its news coverage because of support from listeners like you. In-depth reporting and detailed analysis matters so much to our members that they're willing to make a financial contribution to ensure this important service continues to grow. Their support matters, and so does yours. Please take a minute right now to give and join your fellow GBH listeners in their support. Join now and uh, become a member of the Culture Show. It's an investment that will pay big dividends in what you hear every day. GBH gbhnews.org or 888-897-9424. Today we're asking to join GBH by giving what you can. Your financial commitment will have a huge impact on the news and information you hear every single day. This is how we pay the bills and keep GBH going strong, by getting a lot of listeners to give what they can. Please participate in ensuring GBH is always on the radio by giving right now. gbhnews.org or 888-897-9424. Support GBH, we will thank you with a $50 gift card to Legal Seafoods. They're only available today. They go away at 7 o'clock when all things considered comes to a close today. Gift cards are good for dine-in. They're good for carry-out so you can enjoy the bounty of the sea, all that Legal Seafoods has to offer, uh, whether it's clams or oysters on the half shell or the fisherman's platter, the uh, baked cod. Sign up as a sustaining member at $10 a month or give $120 all at once, and we're happy to send you this $50 gift card to Legal Seafoods. Deadline is coming up just a few hours from now. Please give online at gbhnews.org or call 888-897-9424. And the goal right now is to receive seven contributions in the next 24 minutes. We need the financial support of everyone who relies on GBH to make this membership drive a success. Please give at gbhnews.org or give us that call, 888-897-9424. We are giving away two pairs of tickets to Broadway in Boston during the production of Company, the Tony Award-winning musical. Jump on board. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. The performance is Wednesday, April 10th at 7.30 at Citizens Opera House. Any contribution to GBH, you'll get entered to win one of two pairs of tickets for Company at the Opera House, 888-897-9424 or gbhnews.org. Welcome back to The Culture Show, broadcasting live from our GBH studio at the Boston Public Library. If you're just tuning in, co-hosts Callie Crossley and Edgar B. Horick III are here for our Arts and Culture Week in Review. Well, hey That's right. Is the 007 speculation finally over? Will Aaron Taylor Johnson truly be the next Bond, James Bond? That's the rumor. This is what's spilling out of Britain this week, is that he has been offered the role. He's been very coy, apparently, when asked asked about it leading up to this. But this is just a fun parlor game, because people have been talking about this for years, basically since 2021, when Daniel Craig announced that that his last film was going to be his last, which was the 25th in the franchise, and lots of spe- speculation would it be Idris Elba or Killian Murphy would it be the first female James Bond, and now Aaron Taylor Johnson, whom I would argue a lot of people don't know, but that always kind of plays. He's, I've seen him in some pretty good independent films, but uh, this is this is what makes it kind of exciting if it's true. <laughs> well, they said he's about to uh, sign the contract now. He's 33. Uh, they need him to sign on for 10 to 12 years, so he'd be 43 at the, at, at the end of a projected contract. So he's the right age. But oh, come on. Y'all messed around and didn't get Idris Elba? <laughs> I know. Come on! Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, huge, yeah, that's, that's the biggest shock, shock, I think. Come on! Yeah. You know, and the next choice, everybody thought, uh, Jean um, Reger from, from Bridgerton. Bridgerton. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's another good... Yeah. Good choice. There were some good choices along the way. Yeah, so. I mean, Bond has become this thing. I was thinking about it again, not to not to like be too dramatic here, but a little bit like we've talked about Notre Dame here and how it took hundreds of years <laughs> to build. And you you get these like different layers, these different levels of time periods mm-hmm. that you see in the work. Bond has been around for a long time now, and in some ways you want each new bond is you know a reflection of where we are kind of as a culture at a time. And so in this case, I, I sort of was 
hoping for a little bit, them to take it a little bit further. And like, you're right, like somebody like Idris Elba or a female Bond, like that, I feel like that's the time we're in, that's kind of what I wanted to see. But it's still, I mean, we still don't know. It still might not happen, it might not be him. Well, if, if it does happen, I, I kind of think it's a good choice because for what I have seen in the, his smaller films, he would be a very, probably take it in a very interesting direction. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have thought a lot of the Bonds over years have been uh, very unconventional and we see how they make it their own. Well, Daniel so, Craig, do you remember? Yeah, there, was an out, yeah. there was an I outcry know, about him. There was a, the Daily Mirror ran a front page which said the name's Bland, James <laughs> Bland, with his picture on it. And somebody put a website up that was Blonde is not Bond. <laughs> dot com, right? So, like, people did not want Daniel Craig, and he, he, he really came, kind of came to be fantastic and well-loved as Bond. So. But yeah. those blue short shorts helped with him walking out of the water. I think that they, they, they put that image out, and people thought, okay, well, maybe I can... There, yeah, that, that, that's going to be this. okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> should we just take a little moment of audio wellness for one Cali Crossley? Yes, yes. Yeah, Why don't we play it now? Heart rate's coming down. <laughs> Smile is coming over her face. If you don't know that music, that is from our colleagues, actually, just upstairs from us at GVH at Masterpiece, and that is the theme from Downton Abbey. And now we have learned that after many seasons on Masterpiece, after two films, Callie Crossley gets her... That was a displaced <laughs> modifier. You didn't. You weren't all those things, but you are getting a third film. I am thrilled. Uh, they just announced... Uh, actually, it was leaked by Amelda... I think her last Staunton. name is Staunton. Staunton, yeah. Who is the real-life wife of the character Mr. Carson, who plays the butler on Downton Abbey, beloved mm. Mr. Carson on Downton Abbey. She played uh, the, the Queen Mary's... Uh, Lady, lady in waiting, waiting yeah. for a while. Uh, but as, uh, you know, the dowager countess would say, don't be mysterious. It's the last resort of uh, <laughs> people with no <laughs> secrets. So it's time for them to just come clean well, and say it's absolutely happening. And it's, it, look, it is happening. And here's uh, what she, she said, <laughs> and we'll have more from you on the other side of this, Kelly. But here's Imelda Staunton. She was asked by a BBC Radio 2 <laughs> breakfast show host about reports that more Downton Abbey is coming. Here's what she had to say. Do you know about Downton and the rumours? There's more coming, have we? Yes, there is. Do you, what do you know? Right. What can you say? There will be the final film. <gasps> wow. Okay. There you go. That's it. That's all she's got, but that's pretty huge. <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. Fantastic. I hope we haven't got you in trouble at all whatsoever. I don't uh, care. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, no, you're wild like that, and I love it. Yeah, she just got fired. Uh, yeah. For sure yeah. got fired. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I met Julian Fellows, who uh, created the series, wrote it, and um, Elizabeth McGovern at, McGovern at GBH. And it was right after, I think, the second season when I begged him to give me a hint. Just any hint. I wouldn't tell anybody. I swore. <laughs> <laughs> he said Didn't no. Give you one? no. Couldn't get but, it out of him. But, you know, he said that if people had interest, he would continue doing it. They're like family to him, these characters. And so he's thrilled if people are, are uh, have high demand for them. I'm, and I'm loving it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think know. this is, you know, this is sort of... Uh, <sighs> This show to me is a little bit, it's like the great British baking show of scripted television, yes. right? They, they have found their perfect little note that they hit. It is warm, it is cozy, it's not really controversial, but it's not super boring. No. It's a little bit soapy, but it's not melodramatic. You know, like it's kind it's of, well it's, acted. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> just, it looks beautiful. It looks so beautiful. it has all of this stuff. And these are characters, um, you know, again, because it's, pretty non-controversial because it's sort of you like everybody even kind of the bad guys it's easy to continue to spin these out and it doesn't feel like it gets old because as long as there's a decent story to tell you can kind of tell it again and you want to go back into this world it's episodic by nature and i think it works so like yeah if i'm them i make another one too That's right. it's probably fun for the actors to step back into these worlds oh they love too. it well julian fellows yeah. has said that yeah. it's like a club and they all get to come back yeah. together so i have two things that are going to disappoint callie probably uh -oh. one is did you know i had tea with elizabeth mcgovern at oh. one yeah. yes, i, I see her i met her and i raise you a tea <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> and second, we do have to remember that Dame Ma uh, Maggie I Smith, know. her character, died. So, and she is so much of the reason we Force love ghost. that show. I know, but Force I think, ghost. I think it's gonna, <laughs> it's yeah. gonna flashbacks make, bring up other people though. Uh, well, yes, we, and we will have flashbacks. We have to, yeah, because you know it's just we can't do without her totally. But I think it'll be interesting because he's just written it so well. So yeah, he'll and, find and a They'll way. be in the 30s, so it'll be interesting. The 1930s by yeah. the time we the third film comes, which up. I think would make Maggie Smith's yeah. character about 300. 
hundred and four. Yeah. <laughs> it's by like that point. The, t- the, the very first episode. Am I right that the Titanic just sank? Right? Isn't that like, yes. like the yeah. very first episode of the first series? Yeah. Is like the yeah. Titanic. So right. that's what nineteen twelve. So right. it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've been at it for a while. All right. Well, Vulgarity we'll is no substitute for wit. That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you would say. <laughs> uh, so. Before we leave moviedom, uh, there's, we're, we want to talk about one really nice award that came out this week, yeah. an interesting award that Jeff Bezos has been giving out substantial amounts of money to one person or maybe two people at a time. Uh, this in some way, some might wonder if he's trying to answer what his ex-wife Mackenzie Scott is doing by giving a lot of money to a lot of different people, including a number of arts organizations and others here in Massachusetts. But this year, it's going to Eva Longoria. Yeah, I love this. Um, Eva Longoria, people might not know. First of all, they may know that she was behind the Flaming Hot movie, which actually is a culmination of all the work that she's been doing about raising awareness about Latino creators. Um, And so this is part and parcel of kind of the mentorships, uh, the apprenticeships, the pushing, the activism on behalf of making sure that Latino creatives are in spaces in general. And then, you know, politically, she's just been out there. And so for her to get this $50 million, which will go a long way to many of the programs she already has in place that she, as she put together, with very little money, just because she felt so passionately about it, it's a good thing. And now let's talk about Bezos. He never <laughs> oh, yeah. gave anybody yeah. anything yeah, until it turns out. <laughs> McKin- you know, while he was with, with McKinsey, finally started eking out some of those billions of dollars. And, you know, he's pathetic yeah, trying I, to keep I, up I, with No, I mean, McKinsey. I like the idea that you read the fine print on the $50 million award, and it turns out it's an Amazon gift card for yeah, $50 no. million. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, I mean, in all seriousness, though, yeah. like it is great that this is happening. Yeah. It's great that he's awarding fifty million dollars, two fifty million dollar awards, which he's done multiple years now. But at some point, I do ask myself, like, is it kind of crazy that we live in a world where somebody can be giving away fifty million dollar awards a couple times a year? It means nothing to him in terms of his wealth, and it's great that he's picking people to do it for what he thinks are good causes. But it's also he's choosing. This is, I think, you are good. I think, I mean. It's great that it's happening. Don't get me wrong. But that's kind of, where are we as a society? can't go to the bathroom. Well, this is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? It's a little, I I I don't know. (laughs) Well, it does feel in this case, especially with Eva Longoria and her track record, this isn't something she's dabbling in. This is not a vanity. I I, I don't know you're not saying this. Um, This is not a vanity project, but this is something she has done the legwork. She has been doing this for a long time, bringing uplift to a lot of different sectors of the Latino community in many, many ways. And so it's, it's great to see at least this money go to her this time. Well, that means it's time for our lightning round. These are the headlines that caught our attention this week. Callie, what's yours? I'm very excited because uh, James Corden, people may remember him from his very popular late night show, is returning to the stage. Some people may not know that he's actually a dramatic actor in addition to being very, very funny. Um, He's been good on both ends of the spectrum. Um, And now he's returning, uh, he's returning to the London stage in a film called The Constituent, which is as you might think, uh, having to do with all of the political shenanigans and um, uh, concerns about democracy in this moment. Uh, And it'll be at the Old Vic, which is a very historic theater in London, running from June 13th to August uh, 10th. Um, And I think it's fantastic to see him in a new role and to see uh, the full expansion of, of the gifts that he has creatively. Well, One one Man, Two Governors was yes, the first true. piece that really brought him to acclaim and, and caught his and had him gain attention both in London and then when it transferred over here to Broadway and people saw the talent he had. Speaking of Bond, it was a great surprise when he got his late night yeah. show hosting slot because everybody thought who, unless you were yes. in the theater community, you didn't really know who he is. And so, yeah, there's a pedigree there and I would say based on the last time it transferred to New York, we'll probably have an opportunity to see him here without having to travel to London. Which I love it. Yeah. Edgar, what caught your attention this week? Uh, the uh, official results from the Greek Ministry of Culture about this ongoing project, which has been a few years in the works, uh, off of this island of K- Kassos, or Kassos, I don't speak Greek, so I'm, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but 10 shipwrecks uncovered 
Uh, these range from ships that uh, went under 3,000 BCE, so that's 5,000 years ago, all the way up through ships that went down during World War II. Ten different wrecks. They've, they've recovered all kinds of stuff from it. Uh, and one of the coolest things is apparently one of the reasons why they were looking around this place and one of their guides as they were doing this was Homer's The Iliad. They were using that as part of this. the treasure map. Oh, and, you know, when in the time of The Iliad, Homer writes that people from Picasso's went off to fight in the Trojan War, and they sort of knew from that and other historical texts that this was once kind of a, a cultural exchange point and a, and a spot where lots of different cultures were trading. And so they've done this big sort of look at this island, and they've uncovered all kinds of cool stuff. There's an 11-minute documentary film about this called Diving in the History of the Aegean, which you can find online. And in the piece about this, it says... It's been showing in Greek and English at international archaeological film festivals. So now I also have a new life goal, <laughs> which is to go to an international archaeological <laughs> film festival. Who knew those things even existed? And one more thing. It answers the question that many students have asked their teachers. How will I'm going to use this after I <laughs> learn this in class? This That's will never right. You could go treasure up. hunting, kids. <laughs> Well, my headline is, I, I think it resonated with me because when I was in high school, I had an English teacher, Mrs. Wilde. She actually passed away a couple of years ago, Aww. but she was hugely influential, and she knew that I loved theater, and she knew that I was coming into Boston once to go to see uh, Greece at the Colonial Theater, which Ooh, nice. was one of the earliest professional productions I ever saw. So she wrote Rosie O'Donnell, who was starring it at that time, and said, would you meet my students? Oh. A few of us were going afterward, and Rosie O'Donnell wrote back, and she said, yes, have them meet me in the what? lobby. We got to meet her have a conversation with her, and it just made that whole night magical. Well, flash forward to this story, which the New York Times has just reported, but there is a school in the Bronx that has been really uh, mesmerized by Tommy Orange's novel, There, There, which was hugely hmm. acclaimed. I, I read it. It's fabulous. Yes. A novel, uh, I, I won't get into the plot. We don't have time, but yeah. it's a 2018 novel, and the, the stories that play out in this novel among the ind indigenous community and what they're facing and the characters are facing really resonated with these students. So the student's English teacher wrote this gorgeous letter. They excerpt some of it in the New York, New York Times to Tommy Orange, never imagining that he would even receive it. And often, frankly, if you're writing to somebody like that, they expect a fee to appear in a group right. or before any kind of audience. But Tommy Orange got the letter, again, beautifully written, realized how his words were resonating, and went and visited the classroom oh, and had this awesome. amazing session that's with great. the kids. And this is a school where they're really finding English and AP courses are helping the graduate level. And it just, it was such a beautiful story to see because it, the story mattered to them and his appearance mattered greatly to them. So it's just a really positive story for this week. And it's just come out with kind of a prequel to There, There. Uh, yes, yes so absolutely. It's so it's a beautiful yeah. thing. So hopefully, hopefully more people will do things like that. Yeah. Well, that is it for the Culture Show. You can on, catch up on all things arts and culture by way of our podcasts, which you can find on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Callie, before we go, what's coming up on Under the Radar this weekend? We're doing a full hour with the Mass Politics Profs. They have a blog, and we're looking at the interning roiling in, uh, in the Republican and Democratic Party. We're looking at some of the issues that will be relitigated in this presidential election and some local issues. Um, including Governor Maury Healy's decision um, or comment that uh, she does not want to see the MCAS test go away as a graduation requirement. All right, Edgar, what's coming up on the Curiosity Desk? We're knee deep in our next piece, which is about uh, one of the more iconic and controversial structures here in Boston, City Hall, Masterpiece or Monstrosity. And actually, uh, I if, can answer that for if you. folks Me have too. thoughts on this, especially <laughs> if you are architecturally minded, Email curiositydesk at wgbh.org. I would love to hear from people on this as we put this piece together. Callie, you're a fan? No. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I just tell you rather than having to email you? Yeah, go ahead. It's a got? masterpiece. <laughs> yeah. No. Ooh, look at this. I guess we're going to have to have this debate right here. Yeah. Culture show. <laughs> Very nice. Tune right. in to an upcoming episode. <laughs> and then you can tune into the Culture Show on Monday for Catherine Tallman, Executive Director and CEO of the Coolidge Corner Theater. If you haven't heard, they are opening a monumental expansion. They've had a huge makeover, so we'll talk about that about a movie house thriving when all others seem to be not thriving. Thank you today to the BPL technical and logistics crew, Glenn Heath, Cy Patel, Josh Polonsky, Maddie Geyer, Matthew Glover, Eddie Hickey, Sandra Lopez-Burke, Isabella Karen, Carly Corcoran, and thanks to the Lennox Hotel and the Newsfeed Cafe. I'm Jared Bowen. Have an arts and culture-filled weekend. <laughs> 
Where is Mary? Where is she? she Where is she? She's just about to close up the library. The Culture Show is made possible in part by a generous contribution from the Fiducia Fund, proud to support this station's arts and culture programming. This is the GBH Spring Membership Drive as a non-commercial, non-profit radio station. We rely on listeners like you for the most important part of our income. Please help pay for your future listening by giving now at gbhnews.org or call 888-897-9424. I'm Henry Santoro, news anchor and host here at GBH, and I'm joined by Zach Finn. And we're giving away two pairs of tickets to Broadway in Boston's touring production of Company, the Tony Award-winning musical. But, hey, you only have till 3 o'clock here. That deadline is 3 o'clock. The performance is Wednesday, April 10th at 7.30 p.m. at Citizens Opera House in Boston. Two lucky winners will receive a pair of tickets to Sondheim's groundbreaking musical comedy. Enjoy wonderful orchestra seats and let Broadway come to you. Please support your future GBH listening and get a chance to win a pair of tickets to see company when you do. GBHnews.org or 888-897-9424. At GBH, we deliver the fact-based reporting, thoughtful conversations, and essential information you need you need to stay up to date on important issues, such as elections and social justice and international conflicts. This is a vital resource, one that makes our community stronger and is only possible with contributions from individuals like you. We are better together. Please do your part by giving now. Become a member of the GBH family. Donate today at gbhnews.org. Just click that donate button or call 888-897-9424. And the goal right now is to receive five contributions in about the next five minutes. We need the financial support of everyone who relies on GBH to make this membership drive a success. Please give at gbhnews.org or give us that call right now, 888-897-9424. We are giving away two pairs of tickets, orchestra seats, by the way, to Broadway in Boston's touring production of Company, the Tony Award-winning musical. This thing has won five Tonys. The performance is Wednesday, April 10th, 730 at Citizens Opera House in Boston. Two lucky winners will receive a pair of tickets to Soundheim's groundbreaking musical comedy. This is a great, great show. Enjoy wonderful orchestra seats. Let Broadway come to you. Please support your future GBH listening and get a chance to win a pair of tickets to see company when you do. GBHnews.org or 888-897-9424. Every contribution makes a difference to GBH and our ability to inform you of what's happening in Boston and across the globe. That's the message today. Participation. Giving what you can really does help. 888-897-9424. Go online right now, gbhnews.org. And we want to send a big GBH thank you to Elizabeth in Norton. She writes, love GBH radio and love the new culture show. 